Both up for the game. Mika was clearly focused on what Finland needed to do to beat GB, and equally, Jim Message is saying that you know the focus of the GB lines Ladies, is to keep going. Once again, welcome to Leeds for your third and final game in this European Championship. Tonight, each team has a chance to win the tournament, so let's make it a game to remember. This is heads. And this is tails. This is heads. This is tails. You can call it. Tails. Tails is called. It is tails. What side do you want to defend? This side. Okay, let's turn. Finland won the toss. It chose to receive. Ladies, shake hands. Good game. So, as you will have heard there from referee. Finland won the toss and have elected to receive. GB will be on defence to begin with and we'll see straight from the off whether or not the Brits can stop the titan that is Kusinen and the, the key to all our sideline commentary crews. The key for the Brits to stop in order for them to be successful, Carl. Is it, uh, yeah, it was interesting as well. Finland not messing about. They said they don't want to defer. Give them the ball, put it in Kusinen's hands. Let's see what you've got, GB Lions. And equally, the GB Lions defense will be okay. Bring it on. Let's see what we can. Let's see if we can take this girl down. So I'm fast. This is the battle that I really want to see. The battle between the GB Lions defense and this uh, Kusinen-led offensive attack of Finland. And this could go one of way, one of two ways for both teams. If the Brits are successful in stopping this Finnish attack on their first possession, that's going to really buoy them. But if if obviously if they get the Kusin in freight train rolling, then obviously that momentum switches straight away to the Finns. We're up for a really great encounter this evening. We've got number 54, Jane Meadows, about to get things underway for Britain. And returning are Kirsty Nermaho and Anna Martola. And it's a line drive. And that's picked up. In fact, it's number eight for Finland. That's Essie Soderholm who manages to put the Finns in possession and near midfield call. Yeah, not sure what happened on the kick. There was no, no receiver deep and then GB have the chance to kick the ball deep. They don't kick it deep, they kick it short. It's picked up and, and Finland instantly with great starting field position. So not sure whether GB missed something there just in terms of seeing what the finished alignment was. So here comes Emilia Hartekainen and the Finnish offense. Hartekainen completed nine balls for 111 yards, one touchdown. One interception so far this week. Motion coming and it hands off to the jet sweep. And that's Murray Yaskalea. And the lateral pursuit by Britain, namely Amanda Humphrey and Phoebe Schechter. Yeah, not making any apologies for mentioning Phoebe Schechter's name tonight. First tackle out of the blocks, five yards, Phoebe makes a tackle. But interestingly, uh, the finish, they're not going straight to Kusin and instead they go to uh, the end around play with Kusinen acting as the, uh, the lead blocker. So here we go again, second down, second and six. Kusinen in the backfield alongside Hartekainen. Three receivers out to her right. 
And this time she does feed Kusnin and Kusnin tiptoes her way through. And we mentioned about not being wanting to tackle high on Kusnin. Very low centre of gravity, big power back. And that's the first first down of the evening for the Finns. Yeah, and that's a moral victory for the finish. You've come out and got that first down, second down. You know, it's Kusinen on the ground. So they go end around, then Kusinen, and they're, they're already into GB territory at the 45-yard line. Kusinen, two games, Carl, 468 yards on the ground and six TDs. Yeah, and if anyone's not seen number 34 play, you're in for a treat tonight. She really is spectacular, fast and big and strong. So they reverse the formation this time. Yaskela comes in motion this time and gets the ball once again. She goes round the right end, but met very effectively by Robin Bo Stewart. Yeah, Bo Stewart making a great tackle there. That's the second time coming out of the same formation and then running the, the end around. They've obviously seen something to finish that they like to exploit on the edge. But from my recollection, GB have been playing great on the edge of the defence. So not sure what Finland are trying to exploit there, but they're sticking with it, at least for this initial series. This one very, very close, as we mentioned in pre-game. Britain beat the Finns last time out, but the Finns are current European champions. So, everything to play for. Britain will have been disappointed with the way the Sweden game went, but nevertheless, here comes Kusin in on the middle again with a big gap. And she's dragged down at the 31-yard line, but not before she rumbles for 14 more yards. And a Finland first down. It's Annie Alenko, it's Kaisa Sarapa, it's Heli Ronto, it's Mina Latila. They are the ones, the offensive line for this Finnish team, that are opening up these big gaps. They've run exactly the same sequence of plays on the last two first downs. Let's see what they do here, the Finns, as they move closer towards the GB red zone. Defensive front of Rachel Moody, Becky Martin, Amy Cottingham and Monica Lewinska have got their hands full this evening. Five-man defensive line as they go to the left side this time. It's a and GB are equal to that, maybe two, maybe a one and a half yards, two yards on that first down play for number seven. But they're sticking with the formula, they're going end around to try and get space and then Kusinen up between those tackles. Good lateral pursuit that time by the British defence. Second and a long five, maybe even six as our screen suggests. And this is a promising start from the Finns. Britain wanting to employ the bend but don't break defence at the moment. Obviously operating with a shorter field, but if that big running back Kusinen doesn't have a lot of ground to gain, it's going to be easy for her, but that's going to be a false start against the Finns. That's going to march them back into second and long. Yeah, so this is a break maybe GB needed in order to uh, stall this momentum that Finland did. False start. Offense. Number 73. Five-yard penalty. Second down. So that, that's going to take him back and it means that uh, GB have a chance to have a think about the first and second pattern that they're seeing. Finland yet to have to go to third down, so this is looking ominous now for GB. They need to step up. They're putting five girls on the line this time, eight in the box, five linemen, three linebackers to stop this running attack. Finland yet to go to the air as well and that's Yaskalar again. And she's pulled down for a minimum game by Bo Stewart, called her name twice already tonight. Second tackle, Bo Stewart is very active. She's, she's listening and calling the plays, checking them, and she's done a good job. Two tackles so far for Bo, and we need more of that from her. So, third and nine. No fin gain. Finland yet to go to the air. We'll see if that changes on this third and long, but at the moment, Britain are where they want to have the Finns. Finland sort of just behind the chains a little bit. Third and ten, in fact. After that miss run, as Heikinen goes to the air for the first time and he's looking for Yaskalar again, and that falls incomplete. And that's the key. The key is if you can disrupt their first and second down play, either through a penalty or through a tackle for lost yardage, then they're going to struggle on third down because if their uh, passing attack is not so strong. They do have a deep threat. We'll talk about number 11 in a little while. But certainly that's good play by GB to exploit the fact of the penalty and get them to fourth down. Artikainen comes back into the huddle on fourth down. So from 32 yards out, obviously considering far too far for a field goal attempt, you would consider that they are banking on using their big backs to pick this yardage up. Can Britain respond on third and fourth and ten? And it's a draw play, and that doesn't fool anybody. And the Brits get the big first momentum swing of the game. 
Sam will turn over on downs. And there's the lion roar for you. That's the GB defense stepping up on fourth down to deny the finish. And that'll push him back. And that'll give us first down the GB Lions uh, offense for the first time onto the field. Signs of great play from Finland in terms of that running attack. But if we get him into third down situations, that's where we're going to control the game. So on comes Sydney Green, quarterback for Britain. In the backfield with her, she's going to have Antoinette Morgan, number 26. I thought I saw in there. Antoinette's signpost has been number 17 this evening. But anyway, that is definitely 26 in the backfield who dances her way past the 40 and lowers the boom. Siobhan Walker just pummeling the tackler that comes up, and tries to make the hit. Um, We'll get a name for you, actually. The Mayan Arbin, Siobhan. I think if they've put um, the other running back in the backfield, so we'll get a name for you in a second. But nice running from 26 of the Lions' offence. So second and two for Green in the offence. And this time Green takes the ball herself, and she's got the first, first down of the evening for the Lions. So I think that's uh, Ant Morgan in the lead block, the QB follow there with Ant Morgan leading in front of her, number 26 for GB. And I think um, it's also Ant Morgan that got the, that got the run on first down. So I have had confirmation that number 26 is Antoinette, as this time Ruth Matter comes on the jet sweep. Green fakes to her and carries it up the middle once again. So again, GB showing what they can do on the ground with Ant Morgan and with Ruth Matter and with Green. So. We're making yards of our own on the ground. It'll be our second and six. Yeah, second and seven upcoming. I know you're wanting to gain all the yards you can for the girls in red car, but it is second and seven. Green with two receivers to the left, two to the right. On comes Walker in motion, and Walker again. Green keeps that instead of handing that ball off to Morgan, and she's crushed after a pickup of maybe a yard. Third yeah, down. We know that the finish defense are very tough in the tackles number 75 there is an excellent player for Finland and she will be uh, a force to be reckoned with throughout this game does a good job there in stifling Sydney Green's run big play here third and six for Green and the Lions offense a lot of movement up front for that finished defensive front will we see Green go to the air for the first time this evening we don't. Ruth Matter gets the ball off the left end and she turns the corner and she picks up first down and more. Pick up of 10 yards on the play, first down Britain. Yeah, it's that getting to the edge. So they go to the middle, to the middle, to the middle. They draw those defenders in and then Ruth Matter to the edge. This is nice play calling so far in this opening series. Keeping it on the ground saying whatever you can do Finland, we can do as well. And we have the variety and flexibility of different runners to come at you in different ways. There was a concern earlier in the week that Britain may well be a bit of a one-trick pony with Ruth Matter. So they've obviously got to show a little bit more tonight. But equally, you could argue that Finland rely heavily on Kusanen. So we'll see who can put somebody else into play as Matter takes the ball again, this time off right side. And she's on her feet to the 30. She's patiently watching her blocks and dragged out of bounds close to the 20-yard line for another line first down. And listen to this Leeds crowd roar. This crowd really into this game now. Obviously, it's a crowd with the majority of people here are supporting GB because we're here in Leeds. And they're really getting into this now. Someone's also stolen those Swedish drums because I can hear them banging. I hope this atmosphere is coming across to you guys at home because in this stadium here, it is definitely, and we've got headsets on. So first down, first down, Green and the offence just on the 20-yard line of Finland. Walker comes in motion. This time Walker takes the handoff on the jet sweep, but she's met as soon as she gets to the line of scrimmage by number 98, Laura Pekarin. Yeah, one of those tackles in that interior defensive line. And they are very, very strong, the Finlands, uh, the finish in that interior of the line. Siobhan Walker trying to cut it back upfield with not much gain. Pecorine in there, making sure that she sniffs that play out before Walker has chance to exploit any gap around that left tackle area. So second and long, nothing gained on that one. Second and ten remaining. Still, GB haven't gone to the air, trying to establish his ground game, which if you're in, interested and in know the game of football, any team wants to establish a ground game before having to rely on anything else in their attack. And Green keeps the ball again and she's got space up the middle. And she's got a first down and more inside the 10. And she's bent over. 
but she bounces back up and it's first and goal Lions and 18 knows that she's hurt you can see number 18 has uh, fallen back when Sydney Green got bent back so did the player underneath her and that's the defender um, Nora Kopanen we'll time out injury time out three minutes 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter Oh, but it's leaving you breathless, isn't it, Matt, as this drive drives down the field. Sydney Green uh, battling her way and took a hell of a lick there. They've put in their quarterback, the GB Lions, <laughs> on the line. They're just smashing her up the middle, almost like a fullback. Absolutely, and not that you'd expect them to call the starting quarterback um, disposable, but we do know that there's a, <laughs> a, a, uh, an adequate, if that's a, not, that's a disservice to Elizabeth Bush, but Elizabeth Bush came on against Sweden and was very effective moving the ball. Um, obviously, no one wants uh, Green to take any... Uh, injuries and knock her out of the game but nevertheless the formula is working so far and as you said earlier on Finland whatever you can do running the ball Britain we can do the same so let's see if they stick with this formula they need a further eight yards and it was in this sort of position against Sweden on Wednesday evening where Britain looked threatening yes I can see who's at the top of the screen there Carl as you point out Phoebe Schechter comes in no names nope number 16 for Great Britain at the top of your screen, man-to-man -man coverage. Green looks her way. And it could be that Green is looking. It's a no, so it's a little bit of a decoy. And Green is tackled almost immediately. That's Tina Mertonen who penetrates through that British offensive line. And that's a sign that when it when that you know when you get into the red zone, when you get close to the 10-yard line, which is where they were just inside the 10 that time. Like you said, Matt, earlier in the earlier game that we uh, we looked at, 10 yards and in, everything gets squashed up. 30 coming off the edge that time, made a great tackle. But Green does have that receiver at the top of the screen, very much isolated one-on-one -on -one with that DB. So you might think they're setting something up here as Sean Curse, number 17, takes that handoff. They're mixing things up with Walker, Morgan, Curse and matter. Now the GB Lions defence are good, but Finnish defence are also no slouches. They will they've been good in the red zone, they've been good on third down. These are critical downs now. What you don't want to do with GB is go away from these situations with no points. No, absolutely not. Ruth Matter now in the slot at the top of your screen with Schechter out to her left. And down the bottom of the screen here is Emma Taylor. Sean Kerr still in at halfback and Green keeps the ball again, looking for a gap. She danced inside the five, gets down to the one. And this is deja vu all over again, Cole. Great Britain down on the one. Yeah, that key play against Sweden, wasn't it, on that final drive to give us this first set of downs and then she threw the interception on the next play. She'll be keen to make amends and make sure that she... In at halfback and Green keeps the ball again, looking for a gap. She danced inside the five, gets down to the one. And this is deja vu all over again, Cole. Great Britain down on the one. The Brits are looking for a huge push now. And you've got Antoinette Morgan in there at fullback. You've got Sean Kurse possibly leading the way for Green. And Green is smashed. That defensive front from the Finns comes up trumps. And Green had no chance there. Knocked back three yards and a turnover on down for the Finns. Momentum yeah, swings captain, the other way. Captain of the Finnish defence, Elena Kiro, comes big, strong in that A gap and denies Green the chance to make any further yards. Leading the way for Green and Green is smashed. That defence through before we even have a chance to block them, and so that means that. Finland take over on downs but they are backed up now can GB do something to drive this ball back into the end zone they've got one two three four five ladies on the line of scrimmage and Phoebe Schechter looks like she's threatening blitz as well that brings six here they oh, there's a fumbled snap and Kusinin takes it standing still but still manages to make a little bit of something out of almost disaster for the Finns back to the line of scrimmage but no further that's what we need from this pride alliance we need pressure 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 at this point in the game. As Kusinen, we mentioned, so strong. She takes the ball in the backfield. She's still able to get half a yard with the ladies hanging off her. As we mentioned, we're very proud to be able to bring you impartial commentary here this evening. Britain <laughs> versus Finland. Obviously, all we're looking for really is a fantastic game, which this one looks like it's going to be right from the outset. Second and nine from the five yard line for the Finns. Hartekainen back there again, and the ball handed off and picks up maybe th two. So brings up third and six. Marie Jaskala on the, on the run there, and they're trying to bring her more into the game on these end arounds as a mix for Kusinen to mix it up a bit. Nevertheless, third down. All right, critical down. 
pressure from the Lions uh, on the blitz and then good backfield coverage from a defensive backs and we'll see what we can make of this one. As we mentioned earlier on, we'd love to know if there's anybody out there watching in the UK or further in Europe or even across the pond watching this one. Get in touch. Hashtag WEC Leeds 2019. It's hard to kind of hand the ball off again. And it's Kusnin and Schechter of Brett attempts to make the tackle. But she barrels through Schechter and picks up a big first down for the Finns. And Jay Meadows slow to get up there in mid number 54. Kusnin, absolute devastation on third down. Runs over these GB Lions, including Phoebe Schechter. And... Uh, that was one of the key battles we're watching and Kusinen says all right well here's a piece of it and takes out uh, a number of GB lines and one still down we hope that's the end of the first quarter wow and there's the end of the first quarter call 15 minutes first oh, quarter blimey, that's done gone quick that's all that running Matt well, absolutely this is just going to be a, a fist fight it's have we seen be... a pass yet nope not got ball has not They're gone just through standing the air toe to toe like a couple of boxers and just Feeling Put each other out. out, that's right, yeah. early days, feeling each other out, seeing where the weaknesses might be, seeing which gaps they can exploit. But as I mentioned earlier on, get in touch with us here if you would like to. We've got a, a few, well, we've got this injury to Meadows, got a, a few bits and bobs on Twitter so far. Uh, Ken Wilford, um, go GB, watching from Worcestershire. Yorkshire Academy Rams are watching, let's go GB. Great to see you on, the, on board with us here as the the team switch end I say that's pretty much all we've got at the moment oh we've got a few more coming in as I as I say that X's and O's X's and O's GB women didn't come here to play around the X's and O's team loving this and no they've definitely started off very physical um, but still, so have the Finns yeah still nil nil as we go into this second quarter which is uh, great for GB and uh, making just making you aware that GB, to win the championship, have to win this game by six points. They can't just win. They have to win by six. And that's like due to the points difference that was uh, uh, from earlier games. Like this one very quickly. Claire De Bear, NFL. Is it bad that I'm getting pizza delivered to my flat with instructions to deliver it through my open window so I don't have to take my eyes off the screen? Come on, Team GB. You've got this. Um, <laughs> Send some our way, Claire. Not uh, Jane Meadows, although she's leaving on her feet. She's being supported off, so we wish Jane Meadows all the best there. Uh, starting linebacker for the Lions. She'll be tough to replace if she doesn't she will. come back. Also the kicker as well for the Lions, Meadows. But here's first down after that big third down run. And that's and a it. nice tackle one-on-one. -on -one. We'll get a number for you, but that is... Uh, number 13 on the GB defense. Kaylee Parnell. Yeah, really good job by Kaylee coming in there and making the tackle one on one. So difficult to do against Kusin and nice job. Second and nine, Finland. No score, second quarter in this IFAF European Championship 2019 decider. Finland need to win by as little as one point to be crowned champions. If GB can win by six or more, they will be champions. They're the easy formulas. It gets a bit more complicated if other situations occur. And here's Yaskalar again turning the corner. And uh, Phoebe Schechter comes up, takes a great angle and levels her after a pickup of four. Third and four. I've said it once and I'll say it again. That Phoebe Schechter's a hell of a player. You see the speech she came made that tackle. Fantastic. Uh, you know, Carl, it's all about the angles you take from a tackling perspective as well, isn't it? Third and four. Good blocking from the Finns there, but there's Phoebe straight in like a laser and takes her girl down. Yaskalar was the ball carrier that time. Brings up third and four. Last time they converted in the hands of Kusanen on third and nine. The issue a little easier for the Finns this time, but five defenders on that front and a threatening linebacker. And this time they're going to the air and it goes into Kuslin's hand and the tackle is made and she's pushed out of bounds. And that is 34 for the Brits. Victoria Law. Yeah, they had that on a little screen pass, trying to get Kuslin into space. I know she has the size, but she also has speed and she's good in space. She has quick feet. But Victoria was quicker quicker and got her to the sideline and got her out of bounds and again GB hold when it comes to third and medium third and long situations GB hold them out and so they're doing well on first and second down putting them in difficult situations so here we go then uh, Josie White and Siobhan Walker back deep to return and that's a another line drive and the uh, G 
Josie White instructing her teammates to get out of the way and the Brits retake the field in very healthy field position on the midfield stripe. First down, Lions. We saw a squib kick on the kickoff. We see squib punts. We saw a squib punt earlier from Austria. Am I missing something? Well, I, Is this a new strategy? Again, Somebody tweet in and tell us. I don't want to slight anybody but is it a new strategy or is it the pressure of the game the pressure of the rush I know there's no rush on kickoff but for the punts particularly you were very generous earlier on giving the Austrians the benefit of the doubt as that's Antoinette Morgan who barrels away for a pickup of four and Morgan up to now has been used primarily as a blocker she's had a couple of runs during GB's campaign but she's not been used as a runner but they're going to her she's a big strong girl and she's making personal foul face mask Defense number 31, 15 yards penalty added to the end of the run, first down. Some three yards for the Brits on that personal foul penalty. Morgan brought down by the face mask illegally and just like that the Brits are inside the 30 of the Finland team. Now remember we've been here before, what we can't have is a situation we keep getting into the red zone not getting points. Let's do something here. Here comes Sydney Green then with two receivers to a left. And one of those receivers comes in motion, and it is Walker who goes on that jet sweep. And again, great lateral pursuit, number 88 for Finland, Anastasia Olavuo. I don't know if we get a replay of this, but Sydney Green put a hell of a block on number 30 of the Finns coming down. That's what I like to see the quarterback putting the shoulder in for the block to set a player free. No huddle offence, Brits trying to catch the Finns off guard. The first game of the week, the no huddle offence didn't really do the Brits any favours. It was too long to get plays in and out. Matter in motion and Matter goes the other side this time as she's going to get wrapped up after a pickup of a yard and getting back to the original line of scrimmage. And they are staying at home, the Finns, on these lateral runs. Siobhan Walker and Ant uh, Morgan missed the blocks on the edge there and that just allowed the finish to stay at home. Very rare that they do so and that just nowhere for Rachel Matter to go on that one. She got sandwiched. Third and long and after that bouncy feeling after stopping the Finns on third down a short punt and then the penalty the Lions again face third and long and as you mentioned Carl the Finns will take great heart if they can keep this Lions offense out of the end zone this time Green going to the air looking for the corner and Walker holes in the pass beautiful throw and catch on the corner route first down Lions Siobhan Walker makes a spectacular catch. We saw her do it in the previous game in Austria, and we saw her do it here. And she's looking, if you look on the replay, she gets a good release, gets great separation. Then she's got to go from shadow to sun and still catch the ball over her right-hand shoulder. Great job by Siobhan. Pinpoint accuracy from Sydney Green, though. Didn't have to break stride Walker right in the bread basket, and she could just look that ball in and pick up that first down. And the Lions are on the march again. This time Matter takes the handoff and she's got a little bit of a gap, makes a bit more of a gap on her own, falls forward to the 10-yard line, picks up four yards, second and six. So the GB Lions come out with energy, both of their offensive drives, they've driven inside the 10-yard line. Let's hope they try and get in there inside the five and see if we can drive this ball home. I like the pace of this yeah, offense. I was going to say exactly the same thing, Cole. The pace of the offense. And Green this time hands off again. And Mata tries the other side. And she's got a gap at the five. And she's brought down. Stretches the ball over the goal line. Touchdown, Lions. Ruth Mata. And this stadium completely erupts right now. There are hundreds of GB fans here enjoying this spectacle of Ruth Mata going over. Um, and if GB were considered underdogs, they're no longer considered underdogs in this game. They've been very impressive on both drives. Here's the replay. Ant Morgan, Siobhan Walker and other blockers. Number two out there on the, on the field as well, throwing a key block. And those blocks critical for Ruth Matter to get in. And these are critical points as well. As on comes Lauren Druitt. Important to get a good snap, a good hold, because every single point tonight for the Lions is crucial. And there's a flag on the play more than likely for a delay of game. Let's listen to referee Hengens. Delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, still a try. Well, that's a shame because these extra points, as you said, Matt, are going to be critical. Just to say it was Emma Taylor, number two, on the block for the touchdown. Key block that she threw to free matter into the end zone. Let's see if we can get this PAT over. And it was Anastasia Alavo for the Finns who tried desperately to keep Matter out of the end zone. But Matter used that low centre of gravity and her strength to stretch the ball out. And it's an awful snap. 
and just throw that one away. And that's probably the best of a bad situation there. But yeah, anyway... Most times if that situation happens, you have a poor snap, there's a quick code, it can be fire, 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 whatever you want it to be, roll right, get a receiver into the end zone. So they did the right thing, no harm done. But would have been better to get that extra point, but nevertheless, 6 nothing ahead. Brits would want the game to finish now. If, yep. the, if the game ends now, Britain are <laughs> European champions, but there's a long way to go. Having said that, that first quick quarter went by in a flash. We're 10 minutes into the second quarter, so there can't be long until halftime. There are seven minutes. Jane Meadows, the regular there are seven minutes. is sidelined 32 at the moment, and she's currently sat in the injury tent. Um, so on comes replacement kicker, and that is number 18, Lauren Druitt. So obviously, is the place kicker as well. Lauren Druitt kicking from the 35, back to return as at the beginning of the game, Nurma Ho and Alovuo. Let's see if Druitt can put a foot through this one and the coverage team from the Lions can stay in their lanes and keep things secure. Nice high kick from Druitt and that's fielded by number eight for Finland and she gets back up to the 30 yard line before Soderholm is met by that pride of lions and pride is what every single girl in a red shirt is showing so far this evening yeah that was an effective special teams kick coverage team there and the the, the, the finish are lining up quite up the field like at the 30 yard line to receive these kicks uh, whilst the finish receiver took the ball well gb good with good there with the coverage so here we go then Long way to go. We saw on Wednesday the Swedes went two scores ahead of the Finns and the Finns came straight back. Let's see. Great Britain need to keep their composure. There's Kusin in again. And Kusin is met in the hole by Bo Stewart, who puts in a fantastic form tackle. Lowers her shoulders, squares her up. Pick up of three for Kusin. In. Bo Stewart can deliver a blow. We saw it against Sweden and we've seen it here again tonight. That's the third tackle on the stat book for her and she's really stepping up in this big game, in these big moments. Second and seven for Hartekainen and this Finn offence. Spread formation once again. Kusinen to the right of the quarterback. Does she feed the ball to the monster truck that is Kusinen or does Jaskalar come and get this football? She does and Jaskalar is met almost immediately nowhere to go no holes opened up on that offensive line and who's making that tackle it's number 67 64 beg your pardon and yeah. amy cottingham as you heard from our stadium announcer and again absolutely critical now that they're putting the fins in a position where it's third and medium they're now third and seven what have the fins got when they're taken out of their stride when they can't just run the ball the danger again still on third down even though it's seven yards is still cushioning absolutely but you've still got to respect that pass we know hard to kind and can put the ball through the air she's thrown for 111 yards so far in this tournament and she does go to the air but it looks like that's going to be a false start Potentially, as the Finns do march themselves back, they know what's coming. Full start, offense number 73, five yard penalty, third down. And these penalties come from pressure being built by the defense. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, the offense are, are, are nervous. They want to get off the line quickly in order that they can get on their blocks because they know that their running backs are getting caught in the backfield. As a result of those nerves, they false start. So, third and 12 for the Finns. Still got to respect that pass, as I said, particularly now in this situation. And it does go to the air. Little bubble screen, but that should be sniffed out and read and tackled. And amongst others, it's Bo Stewart again lowering the boom. And that's going to bring up fourth and long. And at the moment, the British defence has the number of this Finnish offence. Yeah, Siobhan Henry read that all the way. You'll see on the replay, they try and get the ball wide. It's, it's well executed here. But 33 has the shot to slow it down. And then Bo Stewart comes in and finishes off along with a host of Lions. And that's good defence. Number 67 for the Lions, Delta and Puna. We mentioned her earlier in the week as the force that she was. And the snap is up again. Schechter threatening to block. High kick. Takes a British bounce back into finished territory. And that's going to be first down Lions at around about the 49-yard line of the Finns. And Green and the offence go to work again. Wow. Let's have a breath. Take a breath before this next series starts for the GB Lions. Because at the moment we are keeping 
the uh, the main threat at bay. That main threat was Kusinen, and we are keeping her at bay, and we are doing it well. For as long as we keep them on first and second down, we will be okay as, as long as they're in third long situations. So first down. Green and that line offense, red formation. Green keeps the football up the middle again. She tiptoes away and oh, gets twisted awkwardly. But does bounce straight back up. She's one tough cookie, that quarterback for the line. <laughs> Green is taking a battering in there, right in the heart of this defense. With 75 and 98, who we know we've seen them beat up on other teams. And and Sydney Green just keeps getting up. Good girl. I tell you what it does as well. Joe Kilby mentioned at the beginning of the game in our pregame about how a new quarterback comes in. It takes time to gel. What Sydney Green is doing for this team is they are saying we're behind you you're putting yourself on the line we're behind you as Ruth Mata runs laterally looks to turn the corner and that's going to be a holding flag two holds come out and that's going to march the lines back 10 yards I'm afraid on that one impressive defense by the Finns that time stringing Ruth Mata out and that is hard to do because Ruth is quick side to side and number 39 there for the Finns coming across that's Hitter Rantanen Coming across to make the tackle. Never Holding. It looks like there was a hole. Offense number 27. 10 yard penalty. Still second down. Well, this is breathless, Carl, tonight. Here we go. Let's have a look. So, Ruth getting strung out, which you don't see a lot. And 39, Rantanen coming across to make the tackle. So, good defense. If you can't, if you can't find the edge, then you're going to bubble that running back all the way out to the sideline. And that's what the defense did. So we've got second and 18 upcoming. Green, you would assume she's going to go to the air. She does. Got time. And that's a risky, beautiful pass. And that's Emma Taylor at the 10. The 10 outstrips the defender. No flags. Touchdown, Lions. Woo, unbelievable. What a pass from Sydney Green. In stride. Emma Taylor, you thought she might get caught, might run out of gas, but she high steps away from the 10, out of a tackle at the 5, and it's 12-0 Lions. The blue Finns. skies above Leeds, blue skies above this Lions sideline. The Finns have been coming closer and closer to the line of scrimmage as the GB Lions go for two. Sydney Green again, body on the line. Is she going to get there? I don't think she is, and she's stopped short. But 12-0, second quarter, John Charles, centre for sport, in Leeds, Yorkshire, home of the Lions, home at the moment of the potential European champions. You can see how she gets, the Finns have been coming up closer and closer to the line of scrimmage, Matt. She manages to get behind them, does it very early on, but Sydney Green quick enough to spot that early and get the ball to her in stride. There are three minutes. Yeah, runs everyone else. Like Great you, job. The sign of a really good quarterback is anticipation. And Green, as she let go of that ball, I thought that's going towards double coverage. But no, she had seen where Emma Taylor was, had the understanding about where she was going to be and put enough on that ball for her to hit her in stride and, she and knew go the for pass six. Pattern more. She knew the pass pattern and knew the angle was right for Emma Taylor to break free. Now, the Finns have not been in this position all week long they've been down against the Swedes but they've not been dominated yet like they are being in this first half as Druitt kicks off another high hanging kick which is going to give her return team an opportunity and the ball is fumbled and sometimes these can go in the favor of the return team a flag comes out which ordinarily is an illegal block by the return team so the Finns could be going from bad to worse and being marched back once again oh Carl I'm just having a, a bit you, of a rest. We Hold need on, a breather. Man. We've got Tash alongside us here from DC. We might give her a headset in a minute and ask her to take over. This is phenomenal. What a way to end what has been a fantastic week here in Leeds for this IFAF Women's European Championship. This I, I didn't think it would start. I didn't expect a scoreline of 12 to nothing GB so early in this game in the second quarter. There's no foul in the play. So the flag so going to let that off. one stand. They're going to let that one stand. It means Finland are going to come out after a decent kick return, 35-yard line. Now, Finland are no pushovers. They came back from Sweden against a tough defence yeah. a number of times in that game. They I did. did not expect them to be out. We are no, going to have no, no. to deliver another knockout blow before this one's over. Well, it's funny. It's like being 2-0 ahead in soccer. 2-0 ahead. If the other th opposition score of the first goal, that one goal lead doesn't look overly solid. And it's the same in football here. You know, GB might be two scores ahead, but if Finland can get a sniff and get a score on the board, that then swings things the other way. It's hard to kind and goes back to pass. 
Oh, and I saw, I did see a grab on the shirt there, and that's going to be pass interference. And I think that was Schechter who was guilty, got beaten by Nermaho on that post pattern. And we've Phoebe seen, just grabbed that shirt. We've seen what Nermaho can do, and immediately the Finns decide, all right, we're 12 nothing down. We now pass interference by the defense, number 33. Ball will be placed on the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. You can see on the replay there, it's actually number 33. It was. I'm, Siobhan yeah, Henry I mean, guilty there was of some it. contact there, and obviously they've seen the pass interference. But Nomaho, a dangerous receiver that can get deep. Well, we're going to need to give her some respect in order to make sure that that deep threat doesn't result in a touchdown. We're quite a way up in the stands here in our commentary position, and that was quite an obvious flag the way she grabbed for the back of Nomaho's jersey. So a gift of a first down, and here comes Kusnin again, and she's got a big hole up the middle. And there's three Lions try and take her down, but not before she's trundled to another first down. A big chunk of yards there for Kusinen. Again, if she gets beast mode on, you remember that run against oh. Sweden for that third touchdown, the run of the tournament Absolutely. so far. Amazing run. But she that... can spin, she can barrel people over, she can run through people. She's got it all, this girl. And that on first down, 12 yards, sets out her intention for this drive. Huge upper body strength combined with a low center of gravity, quick feet, Good, strong, low running position. She brings the load and she's very difficult to stop. But so far, the Lions have managed to. It's hard to kind and goes to the air again. Picks out the receiver. And the tackle is made. The no flags on that one, although that looked to be high around the helmet area. Yeah, but big the... blows going in from both of these teams, as you would expect in this championship game. Um, and some this nice is a two minute warning going in. with one minute and 59 seconds remaining in the second quarter. 25 to 8 and it's the two minute warning 12-0 ahead we'd love you to get involved with us here at the show so we can give you a shout out this evening hashtag WEC Leeds 2019 let us know where you're watching from are you in the camp of the Finns are you in the camp of the Brits are you watching as a neutral loads of noise here so far second and six and Hartikainen on the quarterback draw. She's got a little bit of room, but then it closes very quickly, and that's going to bring up third down. Third and two. Stay with us at halftime. We will be hot-footing it down to the sideline to bring you a little bit of reaction from this first half. Carl, what have you got? Got Kay on Twitter, says yes as I shout on the train. She's dominated <laughs> on that touchdown. This was after the touchdown from Ruth Matter. Keep it going, GB. Lots of people uh, tweeting in now. Burnley Tornado say what a pass by Green number 11 and a super run by Emma Taylor. Great work, girls. 12 nothing and super coverage, guys, that we are on side. We appreciate you guys. Third and two important for both units. The ball, oh, and that's nowhere near anybody. And actually, the only person who had a chance at that really was Phoebe Schechter. But fourth down, what do the Finns do here? Inside two minutes. Fourth and two. You've got a chance here. I mean, you can go to Kusin and you've got timeouts. You can give it to get the, the first down and then you can drive towards that end zone. There is still time here. My money, my money as a, a Finnish coach here would be feed the monster. Feed Kusin in two yards. And I think this is going to be a timeout by Finland just to discuss what's going on here. Carl, is there anything else on Twitter? We've got Claire de Bear, NFL, says time out. a live view Finland. of that baffle women First time out. line. One minute. And it's, uh, it's from <laughs> the, no, is it Wonder Woman? I don't know, but there's Isn't a lot it? of Amazons, lots of them. And, uh, I wonder, uh, Claire de Bear, did you get your pizza in time? Did the pizza get delivered through the yeah, window, Claire? Know. Let us know. Flavor and anything was, uh, spare, if you can... I'm starving up here. What else have we got? Oxford Saints say, great pass and touchdown by Sydney Green for the GB Lions. We appreciate all the clubs that have been in touch all through the week. Rose Wilford says, never been so proud to watch my national team and the flag of GB there. Mupella says, the GB defence in this first half is phenomenal. Quite agree. We agree with you, Mupella. Now, as the Finns come back out, Cole, as the Brits, do you gamble and stack the box for Kusinin? No. Nope. Or do you respect that pass? You defend the end zone. Okay. You're going to put Foreman on the line. You're going to tell your linebackers to key Kusinin. Okay. Everyone else is going to play pass. That six in the box play for Kusinin. Interestingly, three receivers down to the bottom of the screen, but only two defensive backs there. And they do go to the air. And there's a player there. And knocked away by Schechter. The pass was a little high anyway. And to be fair, I think Schechter made that look a little bit more impressive than it needed to be because I'm not sure uh, Russellati was going to reel that one in anyway but nevertheless 
Four and out. Turnover on downs. GB have time. Cole, Let's here's have a, a look replay. at the replay. You've got trips to this side, so the quarterback's going to go that side. And no, maybe not. It's not going to be um, caught, but even if it was, FIBA was there to make a play. So I'm good coverage in the end wasn't needed. I'm surprised. Very much like the Seahawks Patriots Super Bowl when everyone thought Marshawn Lynch was going to get the football and the Russell Wilson decided to pass and it was intercepted by the Patriots at the goal line. I still think you give that to Kusin. But anyway, Mata bounces and she's got a little bit of room around the edge. Puts her foot down and she turns the corner. Runs out of bounds into Finland territory at the 46-yard line. And the Lions are in business again. Oh, Ruth Mata just ran out. She needed an inch. She needed another inch and she would have run that one in. I tell you what, here we here go. Here we go on the edge here. You can see the blocking there from well it's Phoebe Schechter out there again blocking in front of her and just takes the angle away from the thing so they can't and then Ruth Matter's got got the edge that she needs. That was all Matter though as well because that play looked to be designed to go up the middle very much like this one and she's met immediately this time by Pekarinen. Yeah Laura Pekarinen one of those tackles in the middle of that uh, defense there Mina Lentinen and Laura Pakarinen, they've been great all tournament long and that time nowhere to go for Ruth Mata as they bring her to the ground. Still just a 12 nothing game. If we can oh. exploit this and take an initial you. touchdown Thank into you. the heart. Daimos. Fantastic. Great Britain. 25 seconds left in the sixth quarter. First time out. I was trying to listen to see whether we got a, a head count. We're under a minute. We're under a minute, we are 45 yards away. As you say, if Britain can add to their lead here, then that puts a whole different complexion on the game. Having said that, beginning of the second half, the Lions get the ball again. Yeah, they do, and that's going to be um, because they defended so well on that first drive. They get the advantage of coming out and placing a marker on the second half as well. But there's still football to be played in this first half. We know how quickly these teams can score. Potentially, if the Lions are to score here and then score at the start of the second half, that's a 14-point swing. Let's see whether Green is a, an open receiver in the slot, but they feed Mata. Mata looks to bounce it, can't bounce it, but manages to elude the first tackler and fall forward for a pickup of two. Laura Pekaran and again stepping up into that hole. They need to get her blocked if they're going to free Ruth Mata in that A gap. Uh, Pekaran and coming in and reading the play well and she stepped up towards the end of this half to keep this game tight time out in. Great Britain second time out 30 se seconds left in the quarter so third and seven 30 seconds left they've already proved that they can score from a, a far out with that connection from Green to Taylor earlier on so we know Green has got the arm to go over the top of the finish secondary we do, Matt. It's more difficult in this sort of situation is because the Finns are watching Expected for it. But if, it. Yeah. if Green gets a read that Emma Taylor can streak past the coverage, but let's keep an eye on where that coverage lines up. But if Green gets the read, then Emma Taylor could certainly try and go for another. You've got nothing to lose here. You don't want to make a mistake for an interception, but beyond that, you, set, you can take some shots. Lions Trips still have to the one the timeout. Screen. Sorry, Cole. Difficult for us to hear. Apologies for talking over each other. Difficult to hear in the stadium here in Leeds. 30 seconds left. And this time does go to the air and it's almost intercepted. And there was a chance there for Yannicka Nikanda to pull that one in. And she had nothing but green grass in front of her between her and the end zone. Yeah, she got a good jump on the ball. I don't know whether we'll get to see a replay on that one. But if not, she got a good jump on the ball coming under Emma Taylor. So Emma Taylor was free, but... That safety got their eyes on the quarterback and shot underneath and nearly got the pick there. Tipped it up and that's always dangerous when you see a ball tipped up like that. With seven, converging. seven seconds remaining. Fourth down. Fourth and seven. The offense remains on the field. Playing it very, very tight are the Finns. Nobody more than nine yards back from the line of scrimmage. And Green goes up top looking for Schechter. And that's overthrown. No flags. And that will be a turnover on downs. And Kusinin and the offense will get one opportunity at least. GB on the sideline looking for a flag there, but there was no contact. So Well, equally, Carl, the ball wasn't really catchable. The ball was five yards away from Schechter. And that indeed That's is the, the half here point. in Leeds, where we have a, well, for me, a surprising scoreline. Kusinin has been pretty much bottled up. The offense of GB has been on fire. The defense has been equally so. And here in Leeds... 
at the first half, at the end of the first half, we have a score of the Great Britain Lions 12, Finland 0. We're going to go down to the sideline where we can join Tash and Joe, who will bring you some reflections from that first half. Over to you guys. And that is the half. It is 12-0 Great Britain. I am back here with Joe Kilby. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Uh, we talked about, start with, about what GB needed to do to be dominant. And that was effectively uh, stopping Kusinen, which they've done. Uh, we were hoping that Finland weren't going to be able to stop Ruth Matter, and they haven't been able to done, do that. And we're asking for more accuracy on the offence, and we've seen that. So, unbelievable first half. I'm already losing my voice, <laughs> so we'll see how we go. Would you say that right now, Sydney Green is the MVP so far of this game? Uh, it would be a pretty hard uh, thing to take away from her right now. She's really come into this game and, and been entirely spot on with what she's been trying to achieve. Um, the uh, criticism, if that's the right word, was um, that some of her passes have been a little bit lofted, not enough on them. Um, she's corrected that in this game and that you can see the balls are going in much quicker, which is giving the receivers a great opportunity to get onto them and, and take the ball in stride. And we've had some magnificent receptions. Uh, Shiv Walker... Uh, a clutch grab, uh, Emma Taylor, who is a backup quarterback, <laughs> third string quarterback, turn receiver, made an amazing play, 30, 40 yards in for the touchdown to, to break free GB. Uh, since taking it to the ground and really punishing um, Finland, so she is having a, a stonker of a game and doing almost you know, everything right. I don't think you can ask much more of her right now. What do you think that Finland now need to do? Because we said in the pre-game that they needed to shut down Ruth, they needed to basically push GB to go through the air, but today has actually shown that GB can play through the air and still use Ruth as that as that quick get a touchdown. What do Finland now need to do to get points even on the board? Well, it's going to be a difficult task. If they can't shut the, uh, the run game down, um, they've got the jet sweep with Shiv Walker that's probably stalling a little bit at the moment. Uh, Antoinette Morgan, those first few punishing carries, I'd like to see a bit more up the gut. You know, she's a very strong and hard runner to bring down, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, and the passing accuracy is there. He says about the receivers have got to catch the ball, and they're catching the ball. I mean, how do you stop a balanced offence? It's, it's, yeah. it's really difficult, and Finland are currently showing they've got no answers for it. Yeah. And our defence as well. I mean, they've been doing a great job. They've completely shut, shut out the, the Finland offence right now. I mean... At first, it was a bit worrying over those first few drives, um, but at the same time, since then, we haven't seen them really get past, like, into no. GB's half. No, absolutely, and it's all about momentum, and what we will probably find within this game is that GB won't be able to keep that momentum going for the whole game. If they can, it's phenomenal, but invariably they have a little bit of a dip. Um, but yeah, I mean, Finland had a couple of opening... Um, opening plays that got them some traction and then we saw uh, Bo Stewart I think has had a great uh, half uh, really dominant and when she when she grabs them they know about it and and uh, the D-liner are working overtime Amy Cottingham um, is, is putting people down and, and they what looks like is happening is they're thriving on the physicality it's not a case of oh, okay we've got to try and stop them it's actually we're going to dominate them and <laughs> I don't think the Finns have had that experience um, to date uh, and I think coming into this competition we, we knew that uh, the GB uh, defence on paper was strongest but without having been tested against Finland and now actually what we are seeing as a result of playing against Finland, albeit at just a half, is that they really are the best defence in the competition and uh, I don't think they're going to let this go. No, I don't think so either. So you've been in that changing room, you've been in the position of those, those women right now. Yeah. Um, what do you think is what Jim is saying to them in the, in the changing room right now? Well, Jim may well be leaving the players to have that conversation themselves. You know, when, when things are going well and the players are pumped, you know, let the players take, take a lead there. I'm sure he'll be absolutely delighted and will be passing on those kind of good regards and letting some of his DC and OC to, to do the same thing. But it's the players really that are performing on the field. Um, you'll have the captains in there really kind of saying more of the same guys. It's not a lot to, to critique or to criticise, it will just be keep it up. This is a great feeling, an amazing home crowd that's really getting behind everything. Um, let's just keep going, I mean it's, it's immense. I was going to say, mention the crowd next because the crowd have been incredible. I mean you're in, in the mix of it right now, but yeah. up where we are on, on, on the media stand, it's, you can hear it up there just as much. I've been 
struggling to hear any of the commentary and they're right next to me. Yeah, quite. No, it is. And it's um, from having, you know, been fortunate enough to, to, to play in these environments. Uh, I've only played at uh, home really uh, once against Spain in a friendly at Worcester uh, and that was pretty good. But this is a really nice environment and they make a lot of noise uh, and they've got a lot of noise to make about stuff is the kind of uh, equation. Um, and as long as GB kind of keep fighting, you don't have to necessarily put lots of points on the ball, but big plays, big tackles, you know, commitment to the cause. You know, this crowd's going to be with them every step of the way. How are Finland, uh, not Finland, sorry, how are Sweden going to be feeling right now? Because they're probably sitting there cheering Finland along all the yeah, way. That doesn't happen very often either. <laughs> to get that second place. Yeah, they're, they're pretty quiet as it happens. You know, in the, uh, in the game before when they were playing themselves, they had a great crowd uh, supporting them with an enormous drum, which was a complete deafening. I'm glad to say that that's <laughs> not happening anymore it's for the sake of my eardrums and many others. Um, but yeah, I mean, they can be pretty concerned if it's the right sort of phrase that um, this is slipping away however half of football anything can happen you only have to reflect on the uh, the Austria uh, sorry the uh, Sweden Finland game on Wednesday and how in the fourth quarter I think there was three or four touchdowns flip-flopping back and forth you know you give Finland an inch and they'll take it you know Kuzan and, and other ball carriers which they are sharing the load around a little bit and trying to pass the ball uh, so they are trying to look for answers um, but if you give them a sniff of it then they can take it to the house and then we've got an interesting ball game. I think if GB come out again and get another score, the pressure on Finland is immense and that's going to have a real impact on how free-flowing they can be and how relaxed they can be in trying to execute their game. So we saw something quite interesting at the start of the game. So normally you would want your crowd when you're on defence to make noise <clears throat> and, to make, and to put off yeah. the offence. But we saw the GB coaches and the rest of the GB team asking the crowd to be quiet. Yeah. You, being an ex-GB player, you might know more about this this than obviously I would. But why why was that? Well, it's the, it's the defence. I think they're asking for the quiet. Is is predominantly because uh, DC uh, James uh, Branner or Brian, as we call him, wants to be able to call the adjustments in. So um, as the uh, Finland offence come and uh, set up, they might be sort of making some adjustments or some motions and he's calling those last minute adjustments in. And over the noise of this crowd, it's really difficult. So you will see, you know, some sort of requirements, requests for assistance and just sort of quieting, quieting down a little bit so they can get those calls in. So it's just part of the game and, and not us being told off and being too rowdy. <laughs> it was one of those where it was one of those moments where I thought, Surely you want them to make noise, but I was thinking there's obviously a reason. Yeah. And that is a very obvious reason. Yeah, it is. And, and it's, you, you know, it's, it's one of those things you just, the crowd are with bated breath, just let us, let's get a what, you know, let us go wild and let us cheer. So I don't think it's going to be necessary all the time. And a lot of the time you'll see them yelling the adjustments on, but so uh, you might see that a little bit. So a question for you. Sure. Can you ever see yourself being a GB coach? Uh, not, <laughs> this could be an exclusive. <laughs> it could be, yeah. Uh, it, it's not an exclusive in so much as uh, I'm not going down that route yet. Purely just I'm uh, still playing myself for, for my uh, my team, Birmingham. Uh, and being a general manager for the team is pretty all-consuming. We've got uh, plenty of uh, players on the uh, squad at the moment that uh, you know hopefully will be primed to do that as they finish their careers. We've already got guys, obviously Laura Moore, um, is taking that step into coaching. We've got the fabulous Phoebe Schechter on our, on our books, um, who's doing great things in the coaching world. Uh, Nina Killick, uh, well, looks like she's going to be looking after the one of the units. So we've got great uh, girls sort of de dealing with those side of things. But you never know. I mean, at some point, you know, I might want to pass on <laughs> the small number of pearls that I might have. But, um, you know, it's great to see these players, you know, stepping up. And uh, I think we'll see some coaches of the future definitely out of this squad. Yeah, definitely. What do you think that this week, obviously it's the final day, we're at the half, what do you think this week has done for women's football here in the UK? Oh, I hope it's put it on the map a bit more. I mean, we've had, we've had tremendous support, the, the national programme, in terms of um, the other championships that we've been involved with. We had a, you know, a great outing four years ago in Granada for the, the, Euro, the first Europeans that we got involved with, and equally the world. But being on home soil, um, and especially the way they're producing now, the, the performance they're producing, which was... Not quite as smooth, you know, um, those first few games. This is a great product that's being put on. You know, this is a highlight reel that you can badge up and sell women's football in this country tenfold over. So I think it's a, great, a really great endorsement. I think it's a really great squad effort. There's a lot of players being rotated in and utilised, um, be that for injury or otherwise, they're all contributing. So it's a great story and, you know, there's one way that can be, you know, inked in and that's to, to finish off with the win.
and we've seen as well on social media some of the great British NFL stars wishing the team luck. Yeah. Things like that. Do you think that that's what's giving at the moment women's football that step up to actually start to be? And it's not that it hasn't been taken seriously, but when you do see some people talking about it, they're saying, oh, look, they're still not as good, they're still not picking it as far. But actually, it, it's still in that progression stage. It's not at that stage yet where it is going to be up there. However, we're showing, like, Yeah, it is a great product. And I think if you compare, you know, men's football with women's football or amateur football with professional football, you're always going to be disappointed. And they're not, they're not like for like. You have to appreciate them for what they are in the same way that you do women's soccer and men's soccer, you know, slightly different skills, physicality in different ways, and we're seeing that. But actually what you're seeing is, you know, quarterbacks capable of passing 30, 35, 40 yards, you know, flat out running, physical tackling, the Schechter, Cottingham, Stewart, um, are putting thumping tackles that everybody in the crowd is, is, you know, recoiling from. They're not just, oh, we'll just drag you to the ground. They're, I'm going to smash your face in. Uh, and that can be appreciated by anybody. Yeah, I'll be honest. Sydney Greens hit where she completely went and blew them out amazing don't mess with it don't, don't mess, mess with no oh. she, she's a linebacker as well as a qb don't yeah. mess with her um so we're now heading back up to the commentary box myself and joe will be back at the end of the game if joe has a voice uh, to do the rundown with hopefully trying to be like a big nice here but hopefully a gb win Thanks, Tash. Great work from Tash and Joe down there on the sideline for our halftime analysis. Uh, interesting what they say. Early on they said about um, Sid Green being the MVP so far for the Lions. Would you agree with that? Sid Green's put her body on the line, Matt. She's just been running up that A and B gap and she's been taking hits and just jumping back up. And every time she goes down, I wince. And every time yeah. she jumps up again, I breathe a sigh of relief. Absolutely. And, uh, but she's been fantastic so far. But it's been a team effort. You know, I've seen more today from the team the GB line especially that running backfield we've had run, runs from a number of different running backs not just Ruth Matter um, but Ruth as well contributing so everyone's contributing offensive line are playing great defensive defensive playing great and that's what you end up with a 12 nil score everything so far clicking for GB lines very few mistakes and that's what's good to see now in football um, anybody who knows anything about football two halves can be very very different depending on the adjustments that are made at halftime and how savvy the coaches are we could get a completely different ball game in the second half that could go you know completely the other way how did the Lions guard against that and, and maintain the momentum and the dominance that they built up in that first half call well the GB Lions are keeping the finished defense off balance by having their own balanced offense so they're running it well they're passing it well they're running wide they're running through the middle and they're using different running backs which makes it difficult for the finish defense to be able to key anybody equally in terms of the finish offense they've been pretty one-dimensional they came out and ran the same play three times once GB Lions had snuffed that out it made it very difficult so they were running an end around then they were running Kusinen on first down the end around, second down Kusman, that became very predictable. So Finland need to come out if they're going to make any indent into this 12 nothing lead and do something different. They will have plays. Mika, a story that I spoke to earlier today, clearly a smart coach, clearly a European champion 2015. So they will have plays that they can bring out. It's just, will our defence be able to respond quickly enough to, uh, to cope with those? So far, we have been a very responsive defence. We worried earlier in the week whether or not GB and the offence were one-dimensional with Ruth Matter. Um, now maybe the worry is, are Finland one-dimensional with Kusinen? GB shown, as, as uh, Joe Kilby and Tash alluded to at half-time, shown that they've got depth all around. Third-string quarterback Emma Taylor reeling in that reception for a yeah, touchdown. So she's switched from quarterback to receiving duties and obviously has done a pretty good job there. Yes. Obviously, Joe mentioned she'd like to see Shiv Walker um, barrel the ball up the middle a little bit more, use that power, use that strength. But equally then, there's Matter and there's Morgan. Well, obviously, Schechter has not been involved particularly on the offense yet, but she's there in that threat. They don't seem one-dimensional like they have done earlier in the week, Cole. 
No, that's it. The uh, British players have come out and are giving the ball to all sorts of people. Antoinette Morgan's a good example. Number 26 came out and did a lot of blocking for GB Lions in the first two games. But in this third game, she's been a feature running back. She's been the running back they've been giving the ball to first, second down. She's a very big, strong, tall runner. She's a great blocker. Siobhan Walker, similarly, they've been going to her on the edge. And then you've got Ruth Matter come in with those quick feet. She can get to the edge or she can dance it up between those tackles. So they have a variety of different ways that they can get the ball moving on offense and I think that that was always in the game plan but it takes two or three games to get to the point where you can use all of that in the right way and you can create a balanced offense it's a real challenge for a defense make no mistakes Finnish defense are very very good on the Finnish side you say one dimensional with yeah. Kusman, but when that dimension is as big and as strong as absolutely Kusman, and it, you're going to go back to her every time even when you call her or call the play the right play put men in the box uh, put ladies in the box and then you still run Kusin Kusin's still going to run people over it's the old adage isn't it like you, I think you mentioned it in first half commentary call if it ain't broke don't fix it and all week long for the Finns the Kusin in factor hasn't been broken absolutely and therefore they've not had to rely on anything else Yorkshire Academy Rams tweeting in saying great venue for a game of American football here enjoying the game we'll be back here for the 2020 season that's John Charles Stadium been here for lots of finals matters I know you we have it yeah. is a great stadium we it do is. enjoy our time here Neil Pickering says good luck in the second half girls get that win you deserve from the youth coach Pickles from at Tamworth Phoenix and good luck at the senior team tomorrow for Tamworth we'll be there for that game tomorrow we will Joel Pearson says oh man I knew I should have stayed up at least for the GB game sounds like they're absolutely killing it thanks Joel for tweeting in Eric Miller picking up on something that was talked about at half time don't take the crowd out of the game they can cause false starts and are just as much part of the game as the players there's a reason why there's this thing called home field advantage yeah. and neutral fields so keep your tweets coming in we're enjoying reading them out you're part of this as well we're very excited that you've joined us to watch this game the GB Lions are very appreciative of your support we've had tweets and we've had uh, interviews with the players they feel your support they know your support whether you're watching on social stream whether you're tweeting whether you're here in the stadium so keep those tweets coming in hashtag WEC Leeds 2019 and uh, we'll be reading more and more of those out as this game progresses wonderful call fantastic work all round at the half now interest in this formation with the kickoffs going like they have been Ruth Matter on her own at the 20 and everybody else only 10 yards away from the ball and Ruth lets that ball bounce and now she's got it in space and this is where she's dangerous she's snagged though at the 30 yard line that's a great open field tackle by the Finns and Matter and this Lions offence will begin the third quarter on their 30 here we go difficult kick to take and uh, Ruth Matter did good to take it on the second bounce but that was really nice coverage nowhere for Ruth to go I think the return was supposed to be up the, up the middle but there was no, no opportunity for Ruth to make any yards in 31 yard line the Lions have a chance here to make a statement the floodlights have just come on here at the John Charles Centre for Sport South Leeds Stadium here in Yorkshire the heart of the United Kingdom for this final game six final game as Sydney Green takes the ball again and she barrels forward with the help of Laura Dye giving her a little bit of assistance there from the back as she picks up three yards for second and seven. Oh, that was a jarring blow. Welcome to the uh, second half then, Sydney Green. We'll just give you the ball straight up the middle and uh, those linebackers met it. Nevertheless, second and seven now. What a beautiful evening here in Leeds. If we look away to our left and we see the skyline of Leeds City Centre, the skies are blue, a few wispy clouds overhead as Mata goes off right tackle this time and she scythed down for a no gain. Finished defence of fresh, having come away from half time, and they're playing these defenders well. They played Siobhan Walker, tried to get the edge there, but very little space there for Ruth Matter on the edge, despite the decent blocking from Siobhan Walker. They're standing the blockers up at the line of scrimmage and coming in and making the tackle on that play. So, third down and seven for the Lions. Important play. You never want to go three and out at the beginning of a half or on any drive for that matter as Walker comes in motion and Green flips the ball out to Taylor again and a beautiful little play action post pattern from Taylor on the outside single coverage and she reels that ball in with a lovely pass again this ball placed perfectly in front of Taylor and she does well to hold on when she takes the hit yeah single receiver side as well so there's, there's going to be less defenders on that part of the field and that's what they're counting on single receiver single DB and Emma Taylor beats her one-on-one -on -one. Emma Taylor making her case for MVP but I agree with 
Tash and Joe about jo uh, Sydney Green being the potential MVP at this moment. Orchestrating the offense. Matters patient. And then she's slung to the floor by Essie Sestamoinen. Yeah, that's good defense. The, the things have come out and said we've got to play better against the run on first and second down. And that's what they've decided to do. That, that's going to make it difficult for runners like Ruth Matter, runners like Siobhan Walker, runners like Ant Green, uh, and Antoinette to actually make the yards they need on these first and second downs. We heard from Carl on the Twitter sphere earlier in the uh, half-time break as the ball has flipped out again. And Morgan Walker, rather, Shiv Walker makes a first tackle and miss, slides around and picks up good yards on second down, bringing up third and very manageable. Third and four is going to be the equation for the Lions. Smart play calling from the GB Lions. They go to Siobhan Walker in space. Normally she's either blocking or running. This time they get the ball out to her in the flat. She does enough to pick up uh, six yards. Brings up a manageable third and four. Good job, GB. Putting Sydney Green in really comfortable positions, making manageable throws, but she's being very accurate. And there goes Matter on third down, and she's going to be short. Picks up maybe a yard to bring up fourth and three. Interesting decision coming up, but the decision's made already. Defend your ground. Punt team coming on. Yeah, good decision. 12 nothing up. You don't need to think about this too much. You're at the, what you're into, just into finished territory. Kick the ball, pin them back. Bring out the roar of that defence for the GB Lions and see whether they can make something happen in the fin zone half. Now we want a nice high hanging kick here to give those gunners a chance to get down the field and put the returner under some pressure. Needs to be a good snap to start with though and it's not bad. Oh, and the pressure that is put on by the Finns and that ball is live still at the minute. Now it's downed. That was number 15 for the Finns. Jonah Tuovenen who put good pressure on the punter and just like that the Finns are in business. Yeah, that's the first mistake from GB on their opening drive of the third quarter. We hope that doesn't last. We hope that's just a glitch. We did see an error strewn some series in that third quarter yeah. against Austria where the snaps were going over their heads so they just lost concentration inevitably as Joe was saying at halftime teams do suffer from a lack of concentration at certain points in the game but what you don't want is it's all right losing concentration but it's not all right uh, making duff plays unfortunately that was one of them absolutely our officiating crew just resetting proceedings our officiating Play crew clock was not running so we'll go again our officiating crew this evening, referee John Haitians, uh, umpire Stuart Young, David Parsons, Ben Griffith, Susanna Taylor, Jenny Holmberg, Miriam Diefalt and Ewan Patterson assisting. Done a great job so far as the umpiring crews have done all week. Harta Kynan hands off to Kusten who's got space and she's going to take some stopping for number 34. 34 for Britain is the first player there. That's Vicky Law. I don't know whether that was Lucy Peaty actually on the tackle there. I wasn't sure it was 34 or 36, but whoever it was did a great job fighting off the blocker. I think it was Lucy Peaty fighting off the lead blocker and then getting one-on-one -on -one, uh, with uh, Kusinen and still managing to get her down to the ground. That was a really nice play. Great to see number 54, Jane Meadows, back on the field for the Lions. Went off in the first half with an apparent lower leg injury. But here we go then, second and four for the Finns, eager to get things started if they can in this one. 12-0 adrift at the moment and goes to the air and that's in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, who is Amelia Kempe. Yeah, and that was good defence that time by 34 of the GB Lions, Victoria Law, who was all over that one, even if the reception had been made. I think that would have been a tackle for a very short yardage or a loss. I tell you what, Arta Kynan for me tonight looks nervy. She looks a bit jittery back there, not as clinical, even though she's not had to rely heavily on the passing game throughout this tournament. She has been able to connect when needed, and it's balls like that that have been successful during the week that for some reason at the moment aren't finding their target. So, third and four, and that's a fumble, and that's a live football, and it looks like the Lions may well have recovered, and they have! The signal from the officiating crew. Who comes up with it? It's, I think that's Bo, Bo, Stewart. Bo Stewart falls on the football. And I think that's the first big 
big mistake from Kusnan, is it? Yeah, it is. It's the first mistake oh. from Kusnan in the whole championship, to be honest. And Bo Stewart, look at her, right there. She's on the ball and she knows where it is, even before Kusnan knows where the ball has gone. So, yeah, our own mistake on the punt, but then luckily Finland make a mistake on a key third down play, third and four, and they can't convert. Worse than that, we get the ball back in uh, close to their 50-yard line. Didn't look anything particularly wrong with the exchange from Hartekain into Kuslin as uh, Mata goes off right tackle and she tries to find the edge, can't, picks up a yard. That'll be second and nine. So now it just looked like a, a drop. The ball seemed to go into the, the bread basket of Kuslin relatively problem-free, but Kuslin just didn't close the grip well, on the football. It's the quarterback's job to make sure that the ball gets handed off. The running back's job is to keep their eyes on that line of scrimmage and find the hole and hit the hole. So you have to say, OK, the quarterback didn't get the ball into the basket. But equally, if Kushinen is nervous or expecting to be hit in the backfield, yep. inevitably you're going to be tense. Matter again, and Matter dances round one defender. She tries to get the edge, picks up three yards. It'll be third and five. Shout out to this offensive line of the GB Lions. Yasmin Kuzo, Amy Wilson, Vanessa Mansare, Michelle Gwynn, Laura Dye. Just doing a fantastic job up front are the girls to enable these runners to find these holes and seams uh, that are creating these problems for the finish. And at the beginning of this second half, it's very much like that boxing match we had at the beginning of the first quarter. Each team feeling each other out, looking for the killer blow, and this could be the killer blow! Ruth Matter breaks through, there are no flags, she could go all the way! Touchdown Lions! And is that the score that crowns the Great Britain Lions European Champions for 2019? We just mentioned it, the five girls, you'll see it on the replay when we get it up. They just make a tremendous hole for Ruth Matter and she just does what she does best, which is to outrun everybody into the end zone. And that's three touchdowns on the board for GB Lions. I genuinely, without disrespecting any of the girls in the red jerseys, I genuinely did not expect this this evening. I was very, very hopeful of a GB win as they go to the corner and that falls incomplete. I was very, very hopeful for a GB win. I thought the six-point margin would be a tough ask. Here's the replay. Watch the blocking from Siobhan. Watch the blocking downfield. Watch the blocking the receivers and then you're just watching the great skills of Ruth Maddow. We've seen it time and time again. Those quick feet, those... Uh, uh, good eyes, that good poise, and just the speed. There are five minutes. Matter just shocks everyone and shocks the finish into submission. 18 nothing now to GB. And this could turn into a rout. So, uh, I'm, I'm breathless. As I mentioned, very hopeful of a GB victory, but an 18 point margin is beyond anybody's wildest dreams, I would argue, based on how this week has gone so far. Everything just seems to be clicking so far, but we are still in the third quarter. You know these Finns are not champions for no reason. They will bounce back, they will continue to grind. And it starts now with this coverage, but the coverage is good. And Kaylee Parnell, one of three Lions there, mauling down the returner. The Finns, and if you are a Finnish supporter, You'll be willing your team on as you look at the replay here, but you'll be wanting them to find something. The momentum all with GB as three GB Lions collide to make that tackle. Parnell, Lucy Petey amongst the two of the Lions to get there. And you can just see now the desire, the belief from the girls in the red shirts representing their country on this August evening in Leeds as different quarterback in. And it's a Wildcat offense attempt now as Janina Vertonen takes the football, number 25. And she checks out, or actually she checks back with her offensive coordinator and is going to stay in. Yeah, she absolutely pummels the first lineman that gets there. And uh, 25, obviously showing good strength to uh, put that lineman on her back, second and seven now coming up for the Finns, and they need something, and it looks like they're going to a wildcat yep. with Kusinen and three uh, running backs behind her. Big heavy set there in the backfield with this new, and that's gone directly to Kusinen, I'm not sure whether that designed or not. The pursuit is good, 
She manages to bounce off a couple of tackles, falls forward out of bounds, short of the first down, but it's going to be third and a yard. Cushion and keen to make amends for the fumble, I think, and uh, she actually bailed her team out there. But you can see the nerves starting to creep into the finish now as those snaps are going a little bit wayward. They had the fumble from Cushion, which led to Ruth Matter's touchdown. So nerves creeping in for the Finns. They need to calm down and just settle themselves down, go back to what they're good at and establish some kind of momentum in this game on, on their side. And Kusinen did manage to fall forward and pick up that first down. And now a more familiar formation as Hartekainen's back in, but a similar response as Kusinen gets into the line secondary and is dragged down at the 40-yard line. Yeah, Claire Davis is on one on the ground there, and she, she felt the full force of Kusinen, uh, who fell on top of her. You'll see it here. This is a nice play, number seven for the Finns, and lots of uh, block, trap blocking going on there. And then, oh, poor old Claire let, gets, a, gets a belly full of Kusinen. But also, she was very disgruntled about having to come off for the play because the medical staff went on, so she needs to come off, have a, a quick assessment. And then she will be back into action, all being well very soon. But first down, Finland again, and they begin to threaten. And this time it's Jaskalar who gets the ball, and she's got some space. But dragging her down from behind is number 55, and we've called her name Rachel Moody a number of times, yeah, particularly Rachel. in that uh, Austria game. She had two key turnovers. Rachel Moody did a good job chasing. Uh, chasing that right Yaskalen down that time because uh, there was a lot of gaps out in front of, of Yaskalen there. We think Kusner now well over 65 yards on her way to 70 yards. Rachel uh, Matters run for eight rushes, 66 yards, one touchdown so far today. Which puts Kusner over 550 yards in three games. Phenomenal. And this time a new runner. New runner is Emily Ke Amelia Kempi, rather. Called her name a couple of times this week, and obviously the Finns trying to mix things up a little bit. Kusinin checks back in for Yaskalar. You see these GB lines a little bit slower getting yeah. up. Yeah, they're getting winded. They're getting worn out. This is what this sort of finish, big offensive line, big running attack does. It wears you down, and it's all very well having the excitement and momentum, but you can't substitute that for energy. If your energy is being sapped, there's not a lot you can do about it as a defense. Is an 18-point cushion enough? We will see. And that ball is gone over the head of Hartekain, and she has no option but to drop on that ball. And the whistles are blown. That's a loss of 15 yards. So second and six becomes third and 21. Uncharacteristic mistakes. You'll see here the snap goes straight over and to the right. Hartekain actually could probably could have grabbed it. But of course, she's focusing on other things. She just wants the snap to come straight into her belly. She's not thinking of making a catch have to be a good receiver to catch that one so third and 19 that due to where Hartzakainen's knee was when she recovered that football here we go let's see big ass but we know the Finns are capable of picking up chunk yardage and Kusnin comes in motion and this time it's number six once again that's Kempi and Kempi is stopped at the 35 and it'll bring up fourth and 50. Yeah, interesting design play. It actually picked up seven yards. But you've got uh, Kusinen coming in and kind of orbit motion and then coming into the middle of the line on a trap block. And they try and release number seven, but uh, we do enough to stop them and brings up a long fourth down. But they are going to go for it here, I would imagine. They are going to go for it. Kusinen has checked out of the game. And in comes Amy Rasolati. We've seen Rasolati. She's going to check in at the slot receiver position at the bottom of your screen big play for the Finns big play for the Brits but then every play so far is and Harta Kindling's going oh she's got a player wide open and is caught at the five yard line and that is a simple go pattern down the sideline and she beat her defender almost immediately yeah they run the motion from twins to uh, trips down at the bottom of your screen that time you'll see it here which means it's single coverage and 33 unfortunately just gets beat so Parla goes right past her and does the smart thing actually doesn't try and score the touchdown just says alright I'll catch the ball get the first down that gives us a chance to uh, to get into the end zone here Siobhan Henry was the DB who took a step inside and then got beaten around the outside Call ball watching watching the quarterback took her eyes off a receiver and now here comes Yaskalar and Yaskalar oh nowhere to go 
the hole open briefly and then the door was slammed shut by Jane Meadows. What a fantastic play that is by the defence. They always lit the runner goes vertical and Jane Meadows says no thank you and slams her back down to the turf. Second Beautiful and play. Second and goal from the four yard line for the Finns. You think if the Finns have stand any chance of getting back into this one, they need to come away with points on this drive. So Kusnin back in there, still at the 11 yard line. And Kusnin is going to take this football, and she's met by Moody. She falls forward for a gain of two. It'll be third and goal from the three. That's just body on body on defensive line. You can see how much Jane Meadows <laughs> yeah. is giving. Every time there's a GB Lions player dragging her back to her feet and every time Jane Meadows goes back in there to put her shoulder into another player. And this is the sort of football that is really guts and glory. The Finns trying to shove their way in and the GB Lions defending their goal line with everything they've got. Look at that heavy set backfield again. The Wildcat is in. Vertinen is in and now the referees blow the play dead. Is this a timeout? It could be the end of the quarter, in fact. And I think it is the end of the third quarter. And that's gone by in a flash. That's the end of the third quarter. So, one quarter of play to go. Great Britain currently hold an 18-0 to zero lead against Finland, which would be more than enough for them to be crowned European champions here in Leeds this evening. But stranger things have happened, Carl. Well, I feel right now I'm in some kind of twilight dream, you know. 18 nothing. the GB Lions are just about to be crowned European champions. Don't wake me up, Matt. Don't wake me up. Let's see if the Finns can get in here. They're going to want to make it more competitive in this fourth quarter, but they've got a long way to come back. And I'm telling you, those GB Lions are playing out of their skin. They're tired, they're beat up, but they're fighting. And a wounded lion is a dangerous lion. So third and goal upcoming. Third and goal for the Finns. What? Two more big stops for the British defence here. Could put one more nail in the coffin of the Finns. Can that defensive front of Moody, Martin, Cottingham and Lewinska be the key? Seven players in the box and here comes Kusnin and Kusnin looks to barrel. She's short. The defence stop her and it is now fourth and goal from a yard out who no. wants this more the whole trick on on these downs is you get bodies into the gap and you hit the ground so Kushnan has no feet you can't run with any without any feet Matt and that's what nope. we're trying to do is to cut these blockers down and that's what we're trying to do on this play what do you do if you're the Finns do you get smart and go play action I say give it to Kushnan and see what the lines well, have got well at, at the moment they've got that wildcat back in there again and Vertinen's in there it's fourth in goal this could be the championship and it is she's going to go around the edge untouched oh what a tackle that is but she does knee down fall into oh, the end zone the knee was down and that is going to be touchdown Finland the opening score and wow this one isn't done yet you can see how much the GB Lions are giving as players are coming onto the field here's the replay they do go time play out. action injury and time it out. is number 25 who manages just to do enough to get in that's a really good hit on the goal line I'm looking for that knee down and that is so close to being a tackle there Matt it is that did look as though the knee was down Vicky Law Victoria Law came in and made the hit when it appeared that Vertinen was going to get in almost untouched Knee down, we say in the booth, but there is no, no replay. review. No, no replay. Review, rather. We'll the give score you a will replay. stand. What do you think? Tweet us, let us know. Was the knee down or was she in? I don't know whether we've got a replay of that again while we've got this injury timeout, whether we can see that again and while we've got a little bit of a time. And it's the warrior Jane Meadows that's going off the field once again. Here we go, let's see. Have a look really carefully. 25 to the right of your screen. It almost looks like she's going to go in untouched here. Here comes Law. Watch Law. that left knee touch now. And and where's the see. ball? There's the, yep, there's so the knee there's down. There's the ball going across the plane Ooh, of the goal line there. Oh, ever so tight. But I didn't have... Obviously, we're in a booth that are like 50 yards away, so we don't get the view that the referees get. Sunny Sapala comes on to try and add the extra point. And the kick is up. And the kick is good. And the deficit is reduced to 11 points.
Well, you know what? Can this game is not over yet, Matt, by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, what I loved is the tenacity of the GB Lions fighting on that. But this is the type of offense that the Finns have. They will wear you down. They will try and knock you out. And later on in the game, that starts to come good. They're going to stick with that ground game, that Wildcat, and just keep delivering these blows. The worst thing that could happen now for the Lions is to go three and out and give the Finns the ball back because there's still the vast majority of the fourth quarter remaining. Once again, Ruth Matter back on her own. The majority of the British return team all up within 10 yards. Burnley oh. Tornado say definite knee down. Never mind, girls, you've still got this. John says, if Finns lose by this much, do they end up in third place? We'll have that checked for you at the end of the game. Lots of people asking who comes second and third in this competition. Matter fields the ball at her own 20. And she's got a bit of a seam, but she's met almost immediately by Johanna Pakila. So here come GB. Now, what we need here is a nice, calm, concerted drive. I need a bit of a break from all the excitement. Let's just have a nice, easy-going drive back. Do you think we're going to get that? I No. <laughs> this is the Great Britain Lions. When does ever any England GB type team in any sporting situation give you an easy ride? Never, ever, ever. Three, four yards of play. Happy days. Let's see what Green and the British offense can muster here on first down. Really important first down as Matter comes in motion. Are they going to test that edge again? Oh, Green's looking to see what she can go. And she's trying to get around the edge. And she's picked up three. And there's a flag down. And that flag comes from the secondary and I think it's trying to have a look it may well be who's marching back first this is all important here we go holding offense number 17 10 yard penalty first down what you don't want is the wheels now to come off from first and 10 and a potential second and seven we go back to second down and 16 few mistakes just creeping into the GB game. You do expect it in the third quarter, but we do need to wipe it out very soon. This is still a very close game. The bonus is the penalty is from the end of the run. So the fact that Green managed to pick up those uh, three, four yards. Sorry, first down and 16 rather than the second. So first and 16, not quite as bad as if Green hadn't managed to get those three initial yards. Let's see whether we can be a little more productive this time. Green once again picking a way through. And the uh, Brits obviously looking to try and run the clock down. That'll bring up second and 12. Interesting uh, tactics here, Carl. Yeah, I think they're trying to do what we said, which was kind of a, a conservative drive, which is kind of ball control, let's run the clock. You know, and it might be that that's a little bit early to call a drive like that. We'll have to see how this one plays out. It's always going to depend on the, the success of the plays on the field. But the Finnish defence are just going to be ball hawking every down. Now. Absolutely. Second and 12, Lions. Two receivers either side. Looks to go to the air. She gets Emma Taylor again. And Emma Taylor's in space and she picks up a first down. No flags. Beautiful pass once again from Green to Taylor. Emma Taylor with that swagger as she comes off the field. She just flicks the ball back at the referee. Watch this. It's that slant play again. Green so accurate. And Emma Taylor yeah. runs that so well. Does a little juke pass. The first defender takes a hit. And then that swagger getting up. That's what we like to see. A lion with swagger. Good job, Emma Taylor. Vital tackle from captain Alina Kiro for the Finns to bring down Taylor. But now the Brits get a new set of downs. She's going to the air again and she pops the ball out just out of the reach of Matter. One of the few occasions where Green has been inaccurate there, but a very difficult pass for throwing it out to the sideline on that quick out. Don't underestimate the importance of that uh, second down, first down conversion to Emma Taylor. Yeah. Because even though that player might get lost in the realms of history, that was an important play in terms of us to keep this drive going where we just made a mistake on first down in terms of that offside penalty. Momentum back with the Lions a little bit. Let's see if we can keep it. The noise in the stadium is fantastic. Support for both outfits here. Trips to the right. This time it's Antoinette Morgan who barrels through, breaks one tackle and uses her strength to fall close to a first down again. What a barreling run. Anything you can do, Kuzlin, I'll have a pop out as well. As she trucks over a defender, running close to first down territory. And that's symbolic. You watch this play. Look at the blocks going in from that offensive line and then bam, knock you on your back. And then Antoinette Morgan 
still driving, still full of determination, symbolic of how the Lions have played this game from start until now. And they're gonna, they look like they're going to finish strong. Third and a yard. Do they go for it on fourth down here if they're unsuccessful? Oh, we'll come to that in a minute. Okay. I can only take one down at a time. <laughs> Third. Oh, dear, no. Disaster for the Lions. It goes from third and a yard to third and six. And that didn't look good right Four start by the offense, number 17. Five yard penalty, third down. It is, it's such an odd one, isn't it? When you get half the line moving on one snap count and the other one not, it's, it's almost like the communication just goes into to half the line, but not the other half. But this, what we're seeing here from all the lines looking to the sideline, is reminiscent of the very first game against Sweden on Monday night. Play's taking a little bit too long to get in. Then is the snap count lost because you've not been together in a huddle. Now, is everyone on the same page? Defense trying to make the offense jump, but I think they have done. That's going to be another false start penalty. And from third and one, it's going to end up being third and 11. I wonder whether the defender oh. did enough to encroach here and yeah. maybe get pulled off by Sydney Green's uh, cadence count. Did she step into the neutral zone? Full start. Offense number 26. Five yard penalty. Third down. No, it was as we first feared. A false start. One mental error. Yeah, two penalties in a row. And this is what we saw against Austria. This is. I don't know what happens, this kind of brain freeze yeah. where everyone kind of mucks up on us on a series. They put it behind them against Austria, they need to do the same against Finland. So, Sydney Green on third down, Schechter comes in motion, and Schechter gets the ball, and she's got a lot to do. And that is a great defensive stand from the Finns. And it wasn't a three and out from the Lions, it did take some time off the clock. But yes. they are going to be kicking the ball back. Watch the way the Finns defend this edge. Jonna Truvenen, number 15, just defends that brilliantly. Re uh, Ruth Matter trying to make the block on 15, Truvenen. And it's uh, 31 and 15 that come over. Essi Sasmoinen on the tackle as well for the Finns. This drive has not gone well. Let's get rid of the ball and defend. Clock continues to roll, though, in favour of the Brits. 11 points in front. Remember, they need a six-point margin in order to take the championship. And blocked! The ball is blocked! It's still live! And that is going to be Finland football on the 30-yard line. And just like that, we mentioned that these two halves could be significantly different. And the Finns are knocking at the door again. I believe it was Elina Kiro, number 41, the captain for the Finnish defence, coming in on that on that block. Absolutely disastrous play for GB. The last thing you want is the momentum shifting. Here it is, uh, and it was, I believe, no, that's 97. 97 for the Finns, so that's Hika Rakkonen, and then number 41, Elena Kiro coming in to, uh, and it doesn't matter, obviously, who recovers the ball, the Finns still get it because it was fourth down. Here we go. First down, Kusinen up the middle. She keeps driving, but the Brits keep driving back. Pick up of three on first down. The problem with that series of downs where we had the penalties back and forth is that the defence didn't have a huge amount of time to recover. And so you've got a, a worn-out defence against a buoyed offence off the back of a special teams play. And for once in this stadium, Silence. it's gone quiet. <sighs> Which is exactly the time you need the supporters to step up. It absolutely is. So let us know you're still supporting the support uh, support for GB out there as the noise begins to rise again. Tweet us, let you know what you think of this game, what you think of the performance so far. Eight girls in the box, and here comes, this time it's uh, Yaskalar. Oh! Phoebe Schechter like a missile! And we thought Yaskalar may have a little bit of speed and a little bit of a gap there, but Schechter snuffed that out. But she does manage to pick up another three. Never underestimate the power of a good hit. Good pressure all round from the defenders. And this time Phoebe with a perfect hit. Shoulder tackle, head across the body. And the ball, lucky that the running back held on to that one. But here's third and four. Four down territory all day long now for the Finns. Eight players in the box once again for the Brits. And here comes Kusinen and she dances around one. And she's still on her feet, but she's short of the first down. But it'll bring up fourth and a yard. So here we go with the first moment of tonight under the floodlights. Leeds John Charles Stadium. 
GB must win by six at least. If Finland score here, there will only be a four-point lead and we would win the game but lose the championship to the Finns. Absolutely critical down, Matt. What a nail-biter as a flight from Leeds Bradford goes overhead. The Brits need to see if they can stop here. They've got a bit of penetration and that's a massive hit. The side judge from where they're running in from is signalled first down. And another set of four. The clock continues to run. Wow. There are two players down, maybe more. That was uh, that was vicious. First time out. Of a hit. Injury time out. Because Kusinen went straight into the heart of that GB Lions defence and they did not break. They stood firm. And is that Kusinen on the floor? I just hope that Kusinen is all right. I think it's Kusinen that's down. Favouring that shoulder, that left. Let's have a look closer at this. Was, oh. it, was it Bo Stewart that made the hit? I think it might have been, you know. We'll try and get a number of that player that gets up. And that player is still down on the ground. And I can't see number 34. There are five the minutes and 15 seconds remaining so in the fourth quarter. We are going to have an injury timeout. So we heard there were five minutes, 50 seconds remaining. And I don't think that was Bo Stewart. I've, I've got a feeling it was Phoebe once again because Bo Stewart and that replay was on the near side of your screen. And I think it was uh, Schechter that came in and delivered the blow and these signs aren't good for the Finns. We know they can move the ball in other ways. But the helmet of Kusinen came off very quickly. All right, so Kusinen now onto her knees. She's given absolutely everything in this championship. And as much as anything, she's run for over 500 yards. She's now up on her feet. You can see her walking to the top of your screen there, the top left corner of your screen. There's Kusin, and she's walking, going out under her own steam. But she's got the first down for the Finns. It looks like the way they've taken her helmet off her, she'll be entering into a, a bit of a concussion protocol there because her limbs look all OK. Arms, legs appear to be working OK. But how much of a loss will that be? Can she get back into the game for the Finns? Or do they now need to rely on her surrounding supporting cast? As Jaskala comes in motion, Heiken, Heitekainen, she's got a player out there. And that's going to be a flag and that was pass interference because unfortunately, Siobhan Henry did not get her head around again. Yeah, and they picked a bit on Siobhan Henry a couple of times, haven't they, with a deep pass. And now it looks like they're going to get the pass interference, which is going to set them up at the five-yard line. Kusinen gives it... Pass interference by the defence, number 33. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. So, who's coming up from the crowd now? You get a look at it now on the replay. Top of your screen. Henry, unfortunately, gets caught out again to Siobhan. And look, doesn't get yeah. the head round. And just has enough contact to draw that flag. You're going to draw it every time you unless you get your head round. Absolutely. First and goal. First and goal, Finland on the five-yard line. Trying to make them jump. Jaskala comes in motion. And it goes back the other way. And that is number six, Kempi. Gets positive yardage, second and goal from the two. They're having to go deep into their roster now. And you can see these ladies giving absolutely time out. everything. Another injury, injury timeout. Time injury timeout now for one of the Finnish offensive linemen. We'll try and get you her name. But now the Finnish with um, their star running back, number 34, Kusinen off the field. They're going to have to go down the roster. And the first girl up is Emilia Kempi to try and drive that ball into the end zone. Kempi. Uh, Yeskala, number seven, is going to be in there. Again, for those of you joining us, this is such a critical goal line stand by the GB Lions because this goal line stand is effectively for the championship. Mm. They have to keep this Finnish team out of the end zone. A, a four-point win is not good enough. They need a six-point win. And so as time clicks down and the Finns get closer, the tension begins to build even more here at John Charles Stadium. And you can feel the tension. Dusk has descended upon us. It looks particularly bleak down on the field, even though we are floodlit. GB, look at all the players in the box there. And in comes Vertonen once again to run that wildcat. She scored the last time she was on the field. She's going to attempt to go the same way. And she's met at the two. 
And Rachel Moody, amongst others, dragged her back. And it's going to be third and goal on inside the one-yard line. Carl, I can barely watch this. Wow, there are some cataclysmic hits going in here. Like, number 25 just looks like it's going to go in, going to go in, and then BAM! Phoebe. Who is that? Stuart again, Bo Stewart? I can't see. Or Phoebe? Phoebe, Bo Stewart, There's number 48. Both, yeah. So I think it's Phoebe again, just standing this player up on the goal line. Getting so close now, Matt. Third down, I can't watch. Well, two chances to get in from less than a yard. Money, money is on. And that's, that is a score. And that score... It's Kusinen. It back, is Kusinen. Back from the sideline. Kusinen comes back onto the field to get the touchdown that may win Finland the European Championship. She's given it all, Kusinen. They give her the ball. Obviously, she's been cleared by the medics. Have a look here. She just goes over the, over the top and through. And enough blocking from oh. that fantastic Finnish offensive line to drive that half a yard that they needed. Great blocking up from, from Alanko, Sarenpaar, Rontu, Leitila and Nikula. And the extra point good as well. So that's now a four-point lead, as you mentioned, Carl. And that is not enough for the Brits. So from scenes of jubilation not too long ago, we now get scenes of desperation. This drive is vital. Big plays required. Let's get you the clock. We'll get you the clock as soon as we can. We'll keep you informed of what's going to happen on this absolutely critical drive for the GB Lions. They need a field goal. They need a field goal to win the championship. Four minutes, at least seven three seconds. Points. And if they get six, then they will be out of reach of the Finns. Could it GB come down now? Need this these points. Could it come down to Lauren Druitt's boot to win the championship? What a fairy tale that would be. But so far, we've got to get into that field goal range before we worry about that. And Matter is lined up at her 23-yard line, ready to take this one. Do they kick to Matter in space? Do they squib it along the ground? They put it into Matter's hand, and in fact, it's a fantastic kick. Best kick we've seen all week. And Matter picks it up from her own three. And has she got a lane? She's got a little bit of room. Gets out past the 20, up to the 22-yard line. And that's where GB will start. Great tacky from SD Sastamona. And so difficult to get Bruce Matty down in space. Your tweets. Keep him cunning in, coming in. Brooks says, heads up GB, plenty of time to score. X's and O's, our friends at the, uh, the X's and O's podcast say they've got no more nails. Timeout. Injury timeout. Injury timeout, and that's Emma Taylor on the floor at the side, on the far line. Hoping that's just a little bit of cramp. She seems to get there up. Four minutes the, remaining in the fourth quarter. And back to the huddle. So it comes down to this, and Matt, we were reflecting before the game, weren't we? And we I mean, we thought it would come down to this. We know yeah. the, the quality of the games that have come in these European Championships, the ding-dong battle that Sweden and Finland have, and, and now we've got one of our own, only this time it's for the Championship. So, Sydney Green, what can you do here? Ruth Matter alongside you. Is there one little piece of magic left for the Lions here in Leeds on their home turf? Sydney Green keeps the ball and picks up four yards on first down. And they've relied heavily on Green's legs this evening. They're sticking to the game plan that they came out with and it's put three touchdowns on the board. The only issue is they've had two unanswered scores yeah. from the Finns. And GB now really need to put the mistakes of the third quarter and the early fourth quarter behind them and step up and make this drive happen. There was heartbreak on Monday night for the Brits as they got all the way to the one-yard line, looking to beat the Swedes, and then through that vital interception. Green's going to the air, she's looking over the middle, it's caught! And it's caught at the 39-yard line! And that is Ollie Davis with the reception, moving the chains for the Lions. Ollie Davis enters the game with a great play. We've seen lots from Emma Taylor, less from Ollie tonight. We've seen her in previous games. She makes a really nice catch, possession reception, and uh, protects the ball down to the ground. What? Moving towards the finish half now. What composure by Sydney Green to stand in there, deliver that strike, and deliver it accurately. Ollie Davis keeps her eye on the football, reels it in for the first down. And that's going to be a false start, I think, against Emma Taylor. We've got uh, Finnish fans tweeting in now. Laurie Vilgenen says, this is insane. Finish it, defence. <laughs> I don't know whether it was a... Full start. By the offence, number two. 
five yard penalty, first down. It was Emma Taylor guilty of that false start. Just what we don't need. Mental penalties taking yards off us. The Finns are doing a good enough job of stopping that rather than us shooting ourselves in the foot. So the Lions again, first and 15. Four chances to pick up those, four, those 15 yards. Oh, wide open. Makes the reception, does Walker. And Walker's past midfield into Finland territory. Out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Wow. Finland were betting on the run. And Green goes to the pass. Finland have a single safety back and they can't get over on time. And Siobhan Walker makes a great reception, a difficult reception under huge amounts of pressure. This is for the championship and Walker doesn't blink. Oh my word. If ever you wanted a grandstand finish to a tournament, you've got it here as the Finns threaten blitz. Here comes Mata in motion and Mata takes it off the edge and she may have room and she can get round that edge. Falls forward for a pickup of a yard. Second and nine. Another great tackle from Joanna Twuvenen who's playing that edge fantastically well against Ruth Mata. Very few runners can bring out bring down. This is a two minute warning. One minute and fifty seven seconds left in the fourth quarter. Oh my word. Two minutes to go, Carl. Tweet us. Still How are you feeling? We're exhausted. <laughs> I have no idea what's gonna happen, Matt. Let us know what you think. Hashtag WEC Leeds 2019 as we reach the finale of this European Championships in the most dramatic way possible. Under two minutes and GB have to score. They're winning the game, but it's not enough. They have to have at least three points. Here we go. 34 yards away. Second and nine for Green in the offence. Looks to try and make some alteration. She sees something she likes or doesn't like in the defence. She's going to the air and she puts the ball over. Mata snags it. And Mata gets down to the 30. Clock continues to run. Both teams still have three timeouts. It's third and five. It's Walker. It's Walker with the snag. My she, does, she does a great job in just getting us moving. But this is absolutely critical third down. We've got to convert here. Two downs to convert. The snap's gone What's off. That? GB don't What's know the happened? ball's been snapped. What has happened there? The whistle went, the ball was snapped. The quarterback did not know the ball had been snapped. Absolutely terrible mistake and that's fourth down. by GB. And it's going to bring up a fourth. A fourth and a mile. Fourth and 20, fourth and 19, Matt. A worst thing that could happen the at biggest, that possible moment. The biggest play of the tournament so time far. Time out. Great Britain. And the Brits First time out. On one minute, 13 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. The Brits are forced to take time out. Fourth and 19. So I have no idea what happened on that play. I mean, most of us weren't even watching no. the action on the screen because Sydney Green was under centre talking to her receivers left and right. Then the ball was suddenly snapped straight uh, past Sydney Green and she had to rally to recover it. Fourth and 19. What can we do here? We need a, need miracle. a miracle. Absolutely need a miracle. You've got to expect they're going up top. Emma Taylor's got to be favourite. Emma Taylor lined up to the bottom of your screen here, number two. This is the championship right here, folks. Phoebe Schechter at the top of the screen. Has Sydney Green got one more piece of magic? No, she hasn't. And that could be that. Oh, we're going to check what time we've got left. Is there any time for GB to recover from that disastrous mistake on third down? Such an awful way to end the championship. I mean, in the worst possible fashion. I mean, you can accept if the Finns play well, but not a third down error of that magnitude. The Finns take over on the 44-yard line. First down, there can only be a minute and change left, if that. So, that heavy set in again, you know what's coming. Kusnin's gonna get the lion's share, pardon the pun. And Kusnin does on first down, and the Lions should take time out there as they stop it for a pickup of one. And it is time out, GB, one time out remaining. We estimate maybe maybe a minute and a half, maybe less than a minute and a half left in this game. Time out. We'll get you the clock if we can. Great Britain. Second time out. 
One minute remaining in the fourth quarter. One minute remaining. So one minute left. One minute left for GB's dreams to be still alive. But we do need more than a miracle now because we're just out of time and the Finns have the ball. As you mentioned, on a play like that, this will live long in the memories. To lose a championship on a miscue such as that is heartbreaking. The effort that these ladies on both sides, in red and in white, have put in tonight has been exceptional. And for one team to lose it on an error rather than on an inspirational piece of play is just heartbreaking. But here we go again. Second and nine. Kusinin more than likely going to get the football here. Keep the clock rolling. Here she goes again. And she's got room and she falls forward past the fifth feet. And it's going to be third and three. And Great Britain take their final time out. And it's fitting that Kusinin is on the field, running the ball, driving that pile, working and grinding these seconds off the clock to bring Finney. Time out. Great Britain. It's the third and final timeout. 51 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. To bring Finland this championship, because for me, she has been the outstanding player of the tournament. And uh, she just continues to run despite uh, being the battering round that she is, taking the hits that she does. Well, she scored the crucial touchdown after going off the field injured. As you say, she's got to be close to 600 yards on the ground in three games. She has been the workhorse for the Finns. And Great Britain will rue the missed opportunities. The blocked punt, the miscue on that third and nine. So, third and four now. And there's Kusnin again, who gets the first down and gets the championship for the Finns as time will continue to run. And it may well be now that the Finns just elect to take a knee. Great Britain cannot stop the clock. They may well lose the game, but they will walk away with the trophy. Heartbreak, no consolation for the great British girls that they will run out winners. Three teams tied on two wins and one loss. And they are in victory formation now, the Finns. And you've got to hand it to them, Carl. The way they bounce back after that dominant first half performance by the Brits. Takes a strong bunch of girls to come back from that Best deficit. The and there it is. Great Britain 18, Finland 14. You can see what it means to the likes of... Bo Stewart there, distraught walking off the field. So close and yet so far, Cole. Absolute heartbreak for the GB line. So many of the girls in tears on the sideline, hugging each other. Uh, you can see the elation of the Finnish champions that defend their 2015 victory uh, in style here in the end. But in the end, GB do everything they needed to do except that critical two additional points they needed to win the championship. But let's not take it away no. from the GB Lions. They won the game. They just didn't have enough to win the championship. And when the chips were really down and they needed to make that play on third down, a disastrous mistake, which we don't want to dwell on for too long because this championship has been fantastic from a GB Lions perspective. So we will leave you for now down in up in the booth and we will hand down to Tash who is on the sideline for a little bit of post-game analysis we will join you again soon down to the sideline you're back with Tash Crump and Joe Kilby so I don't really know what to make of the end of that because Great Britain beat Finland however didn't beat them by enough to win the overall championship Oh, it's, it's heartbreaking, that is. You Sorry, win the game and lose the championship um, on, I think, four points, three points in the end. Um, going into the fourth quarter, they were in control and just, uh, I think we talked earlier about the momentum um, and it was going to come at some point, but it came and hit so hard. Uh, it's going to be devastating for the squad and all the, su all the supporters, obviously, are going to be devastated, you know. Um, I think it was just a loss of focus, you know, they had to regroup. Um, 
they had a couple of false starts, you know, the, the jitters got in a little bit and they couldn't convert from there and, and just one of those things that happens, uh, you know, as the special teams just kind of just didn't work for that play, got blocked and, uh, and we gifted the, uh, the, the Finns uh, field position and they, and they took advantage. Definitely. I think that was one of the things that I wanted to bring up was the discipline yeah. because you can bring the ball down the field but if you can't convert it or you make those mistakes of those false starts or pass interferences, those little things, it's those things that are going to cost the yardage which will then give the other team the, the, the step up. Yeah, it's one of those things. In fact, you look at the game and the Finns didn't really do enough um, proactively to, to win that game, you might say. It might be a bit harsh, but um, you know, they, they fed off uh, GB's mistakes, which is perfectly viable and, and you know an effective game plan if, if you want to you know, wait and see and react. And, um, the timing fell well for them, they had a real a good rumble, but we just gave away as a pass interference heavy in the, in the back corner there. And it's a pressure game, and uh, as cliche as that sounds, you know, the pressure was on, the, the scores were, were coming, and the, the yardage was okay, in Finland, and, uh, and they got the team change in the, uh, in the tide and, and made it count. We're now joined back by our lovely onside commentary team. Let's do that first. Quick, quick one, who do you think it's going to be? Well, we, we've already seen there the Finns, it looks like being, in fact I can't even see, is that a number 16 is that? 15. 15. Can't even think of it. And the Green Green MVP you see, MVP is nominated by the GD staff this evening, is number 11, Sydney Green. Yeah. Sydney Green deserves MVP. Absolutely. I think it sounds... Yeah. I thought a QB should, a QB is meant for that leader and she really was. I think this was her best game of the whole tournament so far. We stepped in halfway through to your conversation but what a difference a half makes. Um, the dominant performance by the Lions in the first half and you then thought going 18 nil ahead that, that might be a nail that they, they needed but the resilience of the Finns was phenomenal. I think we were out to the third quarter I think we were, you know, we were the best game manager out but I just had that patch with a couple of errors, a couple of maybe... Um, Miss Judgment's on the ball, you know, putting DB on the jet switch, you know, you might want to think about something a little bit concerned. Uh, could be, you know, giving you a bit more uh, speed on the ball and no disrespect. And it's kind of like, when it mattered, you know, just a couple of calls and it's that near them, and we gave things the opportunity and, and they took it. You can't argue with that. And it ultimately appeared to come down to two plays, the block put, which put the Finns in great field position, and then whatever happened on that miscommunication right towards the end that took a third and five down to a fourth and 19. I think it's simply showing that she just moved the ball and managed the field, you know, a couple of good uh, pickups, I think, from uh, Emma Taylor or Patrick um, Davies. From tonight's she results, walked for a game, you know, meaning that they could get those 10 yards and 15 yards in the fourth and 20. In the silver medal, second place for the Great Britons. Well, we've just heard going on yeah. behind us actually that the final standings yep. are Finland in first place, GB comes second, just two points away from winning the European Championships, Sweden in third, they'll be disappointed I guess with that given the performance they had today, and Austria coming in at fourth, so those are your final standings for what's been a fantastic championship, we've enjoyed it immensely. But what's also fantastic is the way this has ended, uh, the scenes down on the field behind us, all four teams here, all four teams staying right till the end, taking part in sort of the closing ceremony almost, and the flags out there representing each country, and a fantastic experience for all the girls involved. a little bit and then when the dust settles they'll actually say look we won the game I'm the excited to see what happens at Worlds if this is what they can do at the European Championships and they beat Finland mm. they beat Austria yes they yes they lost to Sweden but that was only by three points and you saw that there was little moments of brilliance mm. in that in, in all three games that they played and so I'm really excited to see what they're going to bring to Worlds because like what you said it's all about gelling as a team they haven't had it like as much time to gel as previous Great Britain teams 
companies have and have been playing together. So I want to see what they can do with two years of journey, but then also what they can do next European Championships in four years' time. It's going to be special. Absolutely. We mentioned up in commentary, didn't we, Carl, about you, you said about the time it takes a new quarterback to gel and, and for the for the team to trust her. The way that Sid Green put her body on the line for a start today and then with her arm as well. This is now Sid Green's team. Yeah, she's had a performance, you know, she's a dual threat. She's she 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 is so fast. The first uh, group of people receiving their medal are our officials. Please welcome the other officials. We don't have to hear. Please welcome the officials. You mentioned at half time as well. Emma Taylor, third string QB. We saw Elizabeth Bush earlier in the week who came on who was effective moving the ball. So, in terms of the, the QB group, if you like, the QB room, it's in a real strong position. Oh, you have to look as well at Lucy Peters. As well. right. And a very talented one as well. She was stunning on special teams, first of all, sure. on many an occasion. She's a fierce competitor on both sides of the ball. And if you've got players like that who can play in multi positions, you know, dual positions going forward, then you know, the team's going to be in good stead. Absolutely. Turning your attention to the defence of GB, who I thought were tenacious today throughout, just fantastic throughout the tournament, still the best defence in the tournament, even after this. Uh, the well, lost, well, 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 it's so strange to be yeah. saying that, isn't it, to win the game and still lose the championship. But just your reflections on the, on the defence of the GB. I think it's been, they've been incredible and today they showed that they didn't let them score at all in the first half. I mean, they shut them out in the first half. It, it, but people can get tired. We saw injuries, for example, uh, Becky Martin, one of the captains, she was actually out in the first quarter. Um, and so I think that injuries, your body's tired after three games. Of course, okay, you can start letting some. But the fact was, is, actually, they only let in two, two touchdowns in this game. Was it three touchdowns overall the whole tournament? That's a strong defense. Here's Greg Graham receiving uh, the second place trophy behind you. I don't know whether you can get that, Alex. Uh, the GB coming in to receive that second place trophy. And all the tweets we've got coming in and all the reflections and all the people that have stayed to watch us. Uh, we're all very proud of the American football community of what's been achieved here uh, in this tournament. So close uh, to winning it outright. It shows how much of a community football is because yeah. You watch everybody getting their medals right now and everybody's clapping for each other. But also, it was something that I saw before the game. It was as the Austria-Sweden um, game had finished. Um, all of the Austrian players were hugging all of their friends and families that had turned up. All the Swedish players doing that. But also, before GB even played, they were all getting all their friends and families out well and all congratulating, like, all congratulating each other already and basically having those moments. And it was just so nice to see because when you actually think about football, it is a community Absolutely. and it's people coming together to support each other. Other. But it's actually the sportsmanship you see afterwards, and everybody supports each other afterwards. Even though you just played a game against each other, you just keep the one people have lost. Everybody is still there together. Definitely so. Still very much a minority sport, obviously in the UK, and very close knit community amongst all the, the men's, women's, youth game. Um, but this just shows that it's equally as close knit throughout Europe. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great advert for the, for the sport to talk about that earlier. Leads itself 
been a, a lovely venue again, as it always is, and the British weather has done us proud today at least. Just, um, just, just. just about, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but again, the, the support, like you mentioned, Paul, the support actually in the stand, not just from the Brits, but from all four nations, has been phenomenal. Yeah, I've been amazed at the, the amount of noise. And now it's been hard to receive a silver medal. Sweden! Phil tried to talk into the mic. Sweden actually yeah. coming in now to get the third place. No, no, it's the other way around. Talking about their support. Sweden have got second, GB thirds. They're collecting silver oh, medals now. GB oh, thirds, Sweden that. second, and the Finns. They first. had obviously so. miscalculated. I yeah. think it was, I'll be honest, I think it was the win against Austria because the when we were talking oh, about we were Sweden making, points, yeah. they were getting the points for the points difference. That's what it was for because if it came down to a three way title, yeah, see, right. GB beat Finland. Yeah. But everybody then had a loss on their card, right. so it meant it went down to a three-way tie, and it said, obviously, on the uh, Birmingham Lions, lovingly put, thankfully, <laughs> my god, I don't think anybody who worked out with the Birmingham Lions hasn't posted that. Um, Jeannie had to win by six yeah. to win, however, if Sweden beat Austria by over more than what GB yeah. had, then they would jump into second. second that's right. I'll tell you, we put on our, on our Facebook page, but I didn't understand <laughs> 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 We struggled. We struggled. People were tweeting us saying, "Get on side productions, please." But this we were like, we'll, "We'll rely on somebody else for that." Right? Luckily, you found that person. Exactly. <laughs> How do you think this week? Just turning away from this game for, for a moment. How do you think this week um, helps Austria? Because obviously, it's difficult to come in and be put to the sword a little bit like they have been. But it's all experience. So where do they go from here? Yeah, I think they've, you know, they've come in with a great attitude. And they continue to play throughout. You know, the performances that you've seen, I've loved you know, how their offense has worked with the quarterback. Mm -hmm. They've been really uh, calm, composed in that pocket. And I think he's a great leader for that team moving forward. They just need to add a run game, yeah. just to keep yes. a bit of balance. Um, and maybe a bit of meat around the defense. Sure. But, you know, from, from where they've come, uh, the size of their nation and the number of players playing, I think they can be very, very proud. And they've got you know, two great scores you know, against two good nations. And uh, they'll take that away and build it, I'm sure. Absolutely. And, uh, go on, sorry, Cobb. That was just interested in how the Austrian men's game is so very strong and then the ladies game are coming in there, coming in last in this tournament. Is there, is there a crossover of the coaches from the Austrian men's game? Maybe that's not a question for us, it's just a question to pose, to throw out there, I'm, I'm which is, sure, you know, how does that translation work? Yeah, yeah I'm not sure. I know they're playing, I'm pretty sure they're playing full field football nine aside, so yeah. they're obviously... You know, developing players to cope with this kind of, this kind of environment, but, and they have a league structure there. So, but in terms of the support from the federation, I, I couldn't tell you the okay. Turning away from this tournament then and thinking about your Birmingham Lions, yeah. how are things progressing from, from your general manager type role? Are you pleased with the way things are going? Yeah, I would agree with the moment. Um, Team Zipper! Uh, fantastic recovery. Uh, yeah. uh, goal there. Um, you've got that pro-bad tournament and... Um, Data filing over in the States, picking that pattern up, and he's running the Transatlantic 2 over in New York in September. Yeah. We're going to. Um, the Helsinki Wolverines will be there. Yeah. Unfortunately, they've gone. You know, way back when we looked at that, we played in a few times now, and obviously. Our GB From double coverage perspective, things just continue with Nick and obviously just trying to get as much of the game covered as possible. Hopefully, I mean, I think there is a there's a want for it. It's just whether people are actually going to help, and I think that where with double coverage it is very voluntary, when yeah. people come in and actually help out. If you if you don't get the people on board, and I mean, like I haven't been able to put them as much time as I would have wanted to to help help. Right. Absolutely. So hopefully it will carry on and hopefully double coverage can still be a thing in the future, but it just needs people to want to come in and actually cover the game like what, like what we've seen in the Absolutely. past. Absolutely. Well, as professional as we are, Carl, this isn't what we do for a living, is it? We do it just because of the love of the game, really. That's it. And the whole, and the whole tournament's relied, actually, on the is. volunteers, you know, thousands of volunteers over the course of the run-up to the game and then hundreds on the day itself. And it's just worth mentioning those people and thanking them to right. make all of these games uh, possible because oh. without them, we couldn't have a tournament That's right. like this in a great event. Right? And we hope you enjoy the stream that we put on. But, I mean, for those viewers out there, there are literally Carl and I and three other blokes that are here running and putting this on. 
We've got Tom, Alex and Shane here today and have been all week and we couldn't do any of it without those three guys. So we, we think we do a half decent job and at least bring the, the game to the mass a little bit more. And when you've got quality football like we've got today and the weather and the venue and everything else we've got, it makes it really enjoyable. We do, and I think just a big thanks to all the supporters as well. We had a lot of tweets coming in from players actually just saying thank you very much for the support. But everyone out there has shown that this GB Lions program, both during the tournament and during the run-up of the tournament, and we know that most people that are watching are involved in the British game in some way or another. Uh, so it's a tremendous amount of thanks to you. And uh, community feel about what's going on today. It's a great celebration of local football. I thought I was thinking of it. Yeah, absolutely. Just overheard again, nice that all four teams will receive a trophy in recognition of their efforts. So we will leave you with those presentations and we will thank the judges for joining us this evening. Thank you, Tasha, as ever. Look forward to working with you again. Thank you, my man. It's been a pleasure all week. Great to see you tomorrow. Yourself, absolutely. Um, you can join us again on site coverage, not only are covering this tournament, but um, Paul and I will be in Tamworth tomorrow for the London Blitz visit to the Tamworth Phoenix for their Premiership playoff game. We've also got um, Manchester, the Brit Ball flag final is currently going on today and tomorrow. So if you're interested in the flag side of things, then that's being streamed on our YouTube page and Facebook page as well. So there's plenty to get involved with. We'll also be bringing you the Brit Ball final from London and that's towards the end of August. So, without further ado, thank you again, you guys. It's been a pleasure. Um, thanks to all the crew here and everyone involved. We look forward to seeing you again very soon, hopefully tomorrow. Goodbye for now. We're Finland, no, our crown no, European no, champions no, for 2019 for the IFAF no, European no, Women's no, Championship. No, Good night from Leeds.